949-5489. B&L Auto Repair at the corner of 8th and Grissom in Mitchell. Bedford Ford Lincoln Roush at the River in Bedford. IU Health Paoli Hospital, the only nationally ranked health care system in the state of Indiana. Spring Mill Inn in Mitchell. Sullivan Financial of Raymond James and Associates Investments. Highway 60 and 9th Street in Mitchell. Wollston Automotive Main Street in downtown Mitchell, 849-4012. Ingle King RX on Main Street in Mitchell. Springs Valley Bank and Trust with offices in French Lick, Paley, and Jasper. Springs Valley Meadows Highway 145 in French Lick. And by Smithville Fiber, now offering DSL and fast internet service to customers. Another way to serve you better. And now Springs Valley High School Basketball. Let's take you courtside with Q100's Mike Hamilton and Paul Stroud. From the high, the gymnasium at the high school in Mitchell, Indiana, this is the return of Spring Valley High School basketball, where tonight the Blackhawks open their 60th season of varsity play as they take on the Mitchell Blue Jackets. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Hamilton, and for the 29th consecutive year, it'll be my pleasure and privilege to be handling the play-by-play duties. And I'm pleased to have with me tonight, joining us on the broadcast, making a cameo appearance <laughs> because he is down in the Sunshine State where he can't give up his coaching duties as an assistant at Vero Beach, former Mitchell and Indiana State standout, Paul Stroud. Well, the Hawks are excited about the upcoming season. They are coming off one of the best seasons they've had in quite a while, just their third winning season in the last 20 years under first-year coach Michael Leachman. They have a couple of key losses, uh, including uh, uh, Chase Cresselia and a couple of others. We'll go over that uh, as we uh, move along. But with an undefeated JV team that they had last year, the prospects look bright in uh, Valley looking to uh, showcase that right at the outset, Paul. Oh, yeah, I uh, got to do quite a few of Valley's games last year, as you very well know, and they uh, they have some good talent, and, uh, you know, I think Coach is going to instill a winning attitude, and that's what you've got to have. And I tell you, Mike, it's, uh, I, I took last year off from coaching, but I'm back in it this year, and I tell you what, every day is just something, you know, you learn something as a coach, and hopefully the players learn something, and you really got to put a lot of work in. The competition is so great, no matter where you're at. Whether you're in Indiana or Florida, it doesn't matter. The competition is really good. Looking forward to an outstanding season. The Hawks start off with two conference games, both on the road, and then they will be home all the way through to the first Friday in January before they next hit the road. Spring Valley unveiling their 2017-18 squad here tonight on the road at Mitchell. We're about 12 minutes away from tip-off. Coming up next, the Spring Valley basketball report as we're joined by head coach Michael Leachman in a moment. This is Spring Valley High School Basketball. In today's fast-paced society, we depend on our cars to get us where we need to go with work, kids, and a busy lifestyle. We don't have time for breakdowns. That's why so many people take their vehicles to B&L Auto Repair in Mitchell to get back on the road as soon as possible. With three full-time mechanics on duty, including owner Clifton Odell, B&L will use computer diagnostics to determine your problem so they can get it repaired and have you on your way in no time. Trust the team with a decade of complete automotive computer diagnostic service to the area. B&L Auto Repair at the corner of 8th and Grissom in Mitchell. 849-4684. This is the Springs Valley Basketball Report with head coach Michael Leitzman as the Blackhawks open the 2017-18 season on the road at Mitchell. Well, coach, certainly a pleasure to welcome you back as you get ready for your second year, first year outstanding season for the guys uh, finished with a 14 and uh, 10 record uh, even though you didn't achieve a couple of the goals that you wanted the fact that you had a winning season hopefully uh, is going to go a long way towards changing the, the culture here at Valley. Yeah I think so I think those seniors they did a great job of buying in I was their third coach in four years and they did a great job um, buying in and going all in on, on the team and on, on me and I thought 
you know, we didn't reach, we didn't win conference, we didn't win sectional, which is what we wanted to do. But we had a winning season, and it was the first one here in a while. So that's something that we can definitely build on. And I think we did build on it based on what I've seen so far this summer and with the group we've got this year. I think that that senior class really led us in the right direction, and these guys are picking up right where we left off last year. Well, indeed, as you uh, get ready for this year, some key losses, certainly, but a good nucleus to uh, to build upon. And the fact that uh, now most of these guys have a year of understanding your philosophy and your system. So do you feel like uh, maybe at this point in time you're ahead of where you were a year ago? Um, at times, I feel like we're ahead. Um, we really we changed some things we did offensively this summer. So this summer we... Uh, we started a new offense, something different, we did, something different than what we did last year. Um, defensively, we changed a little bit too. So um, we're still adjusting to that, but they're picking it up real, right away, and they're doing a good job with that. Um, I would say we're a little bit ahead of schedule based on last year, but uh, it does help since I've, I've been here for a little bit longer. And they, you know, a couple of things that we had to go through last year, we don't have to go through this year because we already know what the expectations are in practice and for games. So we are we are a step ahead. So it's just you know that's the benefit of being around and sticking around you get some consistency in your coaching you get some consistency in your players and that goes a long way if you look at the good programs around our area you know they've had coaches in that same place for a long time and so the, the longer you're in there the the easier it is for players to understand and know what to expect and um, the more smooth the season can get started did you have a good summer with the guys we did we had a really good summer um, we started out a little rusty but by the end of the summer i thought we were playing really good basketball um playing about eight, eight, nine guys this summer. Um, that, that would probably shrink a little bit come regular season with, uh, with you know, 32-minute games. There's only so many minutes in a game. So it would probably shrink a little bit to seven or eight in the, in the games this, this winter. But we had a really good summer, um, really good practices. And I th- for the most part, we've had some pretty good practices. Um, here lately, we've had a couple, couple sloppy practices, but I think it's just because our guys are getting tired of going against our guys. They're ready to see some new faces and a different jersey. So I think tonight will be a good indicator of um, how, how much more we need to work on in practice and how much we got out of those first couple of practices. You mentioned changing up the offense a little bit, so will we see a whole lot of changes in terms of your overall style of play? Um, I think we're going to play at the, about the same pace, you know, a little bit quicker than what we did last year, but um, just our spacing is going to be a lot better this year, and our, our um, moving the basketball is going to be much better this year. Um, you'll see a lot more ball movement and just uh, just a lot more downhill attacks. You know, last year I thought we stood around too much, and uh, me and the coaches worked this, worked this spring, got together, and found out what offense would fit our personnel. And, and this summer it looked good. You get the winter, you know, and you've got we go against some really good coaches. You know, we got some really good coaches on our schedule, so they're gonna they're gonna have a game plan for us. But I think whether our offense looks great or not, it is putting our guys in a good situation and keeping them aggressive, which is what we wanted out of our offense this year. Speaking of coaches, uh, one maybe familiar face, a couple of new guys uh, coming in, and uh, I'm sure you feel like uh, these uh, two guys, your your JV coach Jared Spear and then varsity assistant Randy Chaplin, uh, doing doing a good job. Yeah, they're doing a great job. You know, um, it's really nice uh, having the coaching staff that we have that we're able to communicate with each other and talk about things and make changes. Uh, coach Spear came from; uh, he was the freshman coach at Mitchell last year, and he, um, he's now our JV coach. And he did a great job last night with his guys. The JV team played with a lot of great effort and. Um, there's a lot of new faces on that JV team. You know, there's not one player on that JV team that played big minutes last year. So it's a whole new JV team. He did a really good job with them in their opener. Um, Randy Chaplin is a is a big addition to our coaching staff. He knows a lot about basketball. Big X's in those guys, and is you know really good with the players you know so he came in and that was a smooth transition and then we've got Tracy still who it's really nice to have that consistency to have him back he knows what I expect I know what he he expects and we're already on the same page picking up right where we left off so overall I think we have a great coaching staff and I'm looking forward to working with them all year. Braden Whitaker, Zach Carnes, Ryan Tao, probably the three guys with the most experience but I know you're counting on a lot of guys that played a lot of JV from that undefeated team a year ago, stepping in and, and filling some very important shoes. 
Yeah, you know, Zach and Braden, they started every game for us last year. This will be nothing new to them this year. They, they, they're they going to be varsity ready right away. Um, Ryan Tao, he played significant minutes for us last year, but played some JV as well. Um, but he'll, he'll be ready. I think he, he plays a very similar role than what he did la- with what he did last year. He'll be ready. Trenton, same way, you know, he, he played some varsity, some JV last year. Um, and in his role, his role is about the same as it was last year. He's going to give us a lot of effort, be a defensive guy for us, be a big rebounder for us. Um, the rest of the guys, you know, Christian, Jackson, Cole, Drake, Isaac, they were mainly JV guys last year. Christian got some varsity experience, but he'll be in a, he'll be in a completely different role than what he was with the varsity team last year. He's going to have a you know a, a bigger role with this year's group. So you know we could have some growing pains early. We got you know four or five guys there that don't have much varsity experience. So we, there could be some growing pains early, but I think once they get comfortable and once they get those varsity jitters out of their way, they're going to contribute a lot to this team. All right, let's look ahead to this uh, first opponent, which uh, tag tack on Orleans a week from Friday. You start off not only on the road, but with two conference opponents, obviously the primary focus on this uh, Blue Jacket team. And uh, just give us some of your overall pr- impressions, especially since you haven't seen them uh, out on the court yet this year. Right. From what I, you know, from what I saw last year, what they did against us and what they did against other teams, you know, Coach Thomas does a great job with them and getting them to play hard and get after. You know, they're going to get in your jersey. They're going to disrupt you. Um, they're going to they're going to want to make it a full court game and really they want to turn us over. So you know, a big point of emphasis tonight is taking care of the basketball, um, moving the basketball ball faking fake a pass to make a pass and then defensively you know we've got to get back on defense that big emphasis from all the mental games i've watched and all the mental teams they've had in the past couple of years and even watching their jv last night they want to get the ball up the court fast so we got to really make sure we get back you know we'll have our safety back already but we'll send four guys to the backboards or we should be sending four guys to the backboard but we got to make sure we're sprinting back if we don't get that offensive rebound because they are wanting to score fast you know they um they got a point guard in cam blackwell who's a really good athlete He'll get the ball down the court quick, so we got to make sure we stop the ball and sprint to the lane and find, and find matchups. All right, Coach, those are the keys. But as far as from the uh, other aspects of the ball game, in terms of with uh, guys like Zach Carnes and Braden Whitaker who have been through the uh, routine, just providing that leadership, helping the kids understand uh, uh, what it's all about, uh, especially going into this first game and also being on the road. Yeah, I think it's important that those two, you know, being, being who they are and how much they played last year and being seniors this year, that, you know, they, they do a good job, you know, on the court with communication, but also in the locker rooms before the game, you know, before the coaches get back there. They got some time there just to keep everybody focused, keep everybody calm. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's just basketball. You know, they do it every day. So um, the only difference is we get to do it in front of more people than what we do during practice. Um, but I think I think those two, knowing those two, that they'll be fine. They'll lead the way, and and you know you know Braden's not the most vocal guy in the world, but he'll lead by example tonight. You know, and Zach he he's talking more this year and communicating more this year than what he has in the past. He'll he'll talk to him and lead by example as well. So I think we've got good senior leadership, even with um, even our other seniors. You know, Ryan Tao lead by example. Trenton will play hard and lead by example, and Isaac's the same way. Those five seniors will do a good job of leading this team and and picking those juniors up if they need picked up. Okay, let's hope that all comes together. Coach, I know everybody anxious to finally get things uh, going, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, turn out well tonight. Definitely. Thank you very much. And this has been the Springs Valley Basketball Report with head coach Michael Leisman as the Blackhawks take on Mitchell in their season opener. We'll have more of our pregame in a moment. This is Springs Valley High School Basketball. <laughs> Delicious granny cake with pecan sauce, a specialty worth the trip to Spring Mill Inn. This is Taylor Fleetwood, sales manager, asking you to bring the family for our bounteous buffet and big selection of desserts to satisfy any palate. Come to the Spring Mill Inn and watch the birds feed as you enjoy lunch or dinner buffet featuring a big salad bar, colorful vegetables, great tasting chicken, fish, and meats, and delicious desserts, including granny cake. And stop by the gift shop after a great meal at the Spring Mill Inn. Welcome you in to the Hive in Mitchell as Spring Valley debuts its 2017-18 version under second-year coach Michael Leachman, new coaching staff as well with Jared Spear, the JV coach, and then varsity assistant 
Randy Chaplin and C-Team coach Tracy Tucker. All right, we're ready to take a look at the starting lineups in the contest. Here to give us the rundown, our very own Paul Stroud. All right, thank you very much, Mike. First of all, for the homestanding Mitchell Blue Jackets, this is the first game for both teams. At one forward will be a 6'1 senior, Kay Pritchett. The other forward will be a 6'1 sophomore, Jarrett Phillips. And at center will be a 6'3 senior, Braxton Barrett. The guards will be a 5'9 senior, Cameron Blackwell. And the other guard will be a six-foot junior, Peyton Moore. The coach by Doug Thomas in his sixth year at Mitchell with a 34 and 72 record. For the visiting, that's cousin Doug, right? That, that is right. That's second cousin Doug. Uh, for the visiting Spring Valley Blackhawks, they will go at one forward with a 5'11 junior, Jackson Land, averaging at one point from last year. They have a forward, a six-three senior. He's been around for a while. Braden Whitaker at 13 points per game last year. The center will be Ryan Zow, a 6'4 senior, at 3.5 points a game. And the guard tandem will be a 5'9 junior, Kristen Tucker, a couple points a game last year, and also a 5'9 senior, Zach Carr, at four points per game. The coach ball by Michael Leachman in his second year of 14 and 10. And now here to call all the exciting action from Mitchell High School, the voice of Blackhawk Athletics and Basketball, Mike Hamilton. All right, Paul Stroud, thank you very much, and hello again, everyone, as Valley controls the tap. Braden Whitaker out jumping Braxton Barrett. Let Hawks move left to right here to start things off. Almost a turnover. Land jumps it out now to Zach Carr, so clear it away to Christian Tucker. Right wing now to Whitaker. Mitchell starting out in, uh, looks like pretty much a man-to-man, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, okay. yeah. Maybe might more be, of a matchup, but right, might be a little matchup involved here. We'll we'll take another look at it. All right, here's Whitaker on the left side, off to Tau, can't get the shot off, clears it away now to Braden, looks to drive it on Kate Pritchett, cannot, cannot, jumps it back out along the perimeter here to Jackson Land. This possession is gone for 45 seconds now. As Tucker all the way to the goal, little up and under move, and he got it to go. Nice move by Christian Tucker as he found a seam along the baseline. And a little dipsy doodle and Valley with their first points of the year and their first lead. Trying to change that with a three is Jarrett Phillips. It's off the rim. Rebound to Jackson Land. Here come the Hawks. Right wing pass comes off to Whitaker. Braden tries to go to a cutting Carnes. Instead goes at the point to Tau. Off to Tucker. He can't get the shot off. Works it around now to Whitaker. Good crisp passing here in the early going, it looks like, Paul, for this Valley team. Absolutely, Mike especially for the first game. Here's Whitaker out beyond the arc. Clears it away to Tucker. Can't get the shot off. Christian one dribble. Jumps it back off to Whitaker. Almost lost it. Now he did. Picked up by Cade Pritchett. Break the other way. Three on two. Run trap. Right into Christian Tucker. (laughs) That had to be a travel. It had to be a foul. It had to be something. No whistle. I think the first thing that happened, Mike, was a travel. Right. Well, the ball ends up going out of bounds, and they'll keep it with Mitchell. Barrett can't get the shot off. Clears it away now to Phillips, and he'll jump it out now to Cam Blackwell. One of really only two starters back from this squad from a year ago. Kate Pritchett was the other one. There goes Phillips down the lane. Scoops it up. Couldn't get the roll. Jackson land another rebound. Off now to Karn. Zach roars it into the front court. Leaves it to land. Off now to Whitaker. Braden out beyond the arc. Free throw line to Tau. He's going to launch a 16-footer. Comes up short. The rebound pulled out of there by Phillips. Mitchell running. Lob pass into the front court to Barrett. And it's stripped from behind by Brayden Whitaker. Alert play there. Here come the Hawks with a 2-0 lead. Pass tipped. He'll go into the backcourt. And Zach Carnes will retrieve it there. Guarded by Blackwell. He drives it. He goes down the lane. He throws up a wild shot looking to draw the foul. And he will get bailed out. Well, good job by Zach that time. He comes up hobbling here a little bit. And that's something that uh, Zach didn't do a whole lot of last year, was that penetration. But, again, with guys like Josh Weddle gone and Logan Russell, all, uh, he's going to be counted on to do a lot more. Right. And, you know, he's starting to take the ball to the basket, Mike. He doesn't have a lot of height, but he's got some quickness. The foul on Jarek Phillips is his first. Uh, Zach misses. The first free throw, the lefty can't get the other one to go, but Ryan Tau runs down the rebound in the left corner. Jumps it off now to Whitaker. Back to land. Takes the three, drives the lane, scoops it up, and it's blocked away 
by Barrett, picked up by Pritchett, and then he throws it away. But it's tipped right back to Phillips, who takes it in, runs right over Christian Peckham, is called for the offensive foul. Good job by Christian to set himself and take the charge there. Doug Thomas didn't like it, but a good defensive heads up play made by the Hawks there. And that's also the second foul on Jarrett Phillips, so Doug Thomas is going to have to make a quick change as Edric Cash, a 5'11 sophomore, enters the lineup now for the jacket. And that's one of the hardest things to get players to do, Mike, is take that charge. Here is Tucker, can't get the three, penetrates, kicks it down in the corner to Karn. Stack, looking to drive, top of the key now to Tau. He'll hand off to Whitaker, Braden for three, off the back of the rim. Rebound, land, one dribble, back up, and no good. He'll try again. Looks, throws it into the lane where it's grabbed by Tucker, and his little floater is good. Christian Tucker has his fourth point. As Valley now runs out to a 4 nothing lead, as the Jackets still looking for their first points of the contest. Here's Pritchett out front, off the Barrett screen. Takes it down the lane, scoops it up, left it short, rebound to land. Jackson running back the other way. One on two, so he'll slow it down, leave it off for Tucker for three, and that one's off the back iron, and the rebound battle for Ryan Powell couldn't come up with it, and it'll go back over to Mitchell. As it looks like again, Paul, the Hawks will get out in transition when the opportunity presents itself. They want to do that, Mike, and also Jackson Land has been a bull on the uh, backboard. He's got five rebounds already. Wow. Four nothing Hawks. Pritchett with the catch. Top of the key, it comes off to Moore. And Moore turned over it off his leg and out of bounds. Yeah. Third turnover for the Blue Jackets. Valley has two. Well, we have played half the quarter, and Hawks are uh, pitching a shutout here defensively. I don't think that's going to last, but <laughs> at least for now, gives the oppor- opportunity to ha- stake the Hawks out to a lead. Off the screen. Carnes to the baseline, cut off, throws it out top now to land. Now it's swing it around to Cole Cooper, who's just checked into the ball game now for the first time. 5'10", junior, on the high post. Whitaker takes it into lane, turns back the other way. He's one up, no good. Rebound Cooper, fakes back up, no good. Ooh. Partially blocked by Barrett. Looks like a lot of contact. The officials didn't call it. Here comes Mitchell back the other way. Still looking for their first points of the game. We have played four and a half minutes. First Valley's only scored two baskets themselves. Blackwell isolates with Carr. Kicked it left side now to Moore. Off to Pritchett. Back over to Cash. Off the leg of Cole Cooper. Fight for the loose ball. Cash at it. Tip free. Oh, it's picked up by Barrett. He lost the handle. He got it back. He leans in. He puts it up and in. Boy, the ball just was not bad Valley's way. Big scrum. And Mitchell kept coming up with a loose ball. They've got their first basket. It's 4-2. Land to a cutting car, took it back to Jackson. Into lane, cut off, jumps it off to Tucker. Krishna will try a three. It is around, it is no good. The rebound run down by Cole Cooper, though. The Valley will get a second look now. And it's Christian now 0 for 2 from downtown. 2.40 to go here in the opening quarter. Christian penetrates down the lane, throws up the runner, no good. Got his own rebound back up, no good, but a foul. Well, Christian saw limited minutes on in on. The varsity last year, I'll tell you what, he, you can tell here, Paul, he has worked hard over the summer months. Right. I'll tell you what, uh, Valley is totally out-rebounding the Jackets right now. Uh, Land has five, six, seven, eight, eight to uh, two in rebound. Boy, Valley can't buy a free throw. Christian misses that one. So with Zach go for two, they're now 0 for three and now make it one for four as that one goes so it's christian tucker five mitchell two two and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter on the fast eddie's country store and delhi scoreboard more of the catch right wing top of the key to cash sends it left side to pritchard takes cooper into the lane scoops it up and overshot the goal rebound to brayden whitaker as mitchell now one for their first six hook pass cooper along the baseline puts it up from 10 well short that time and Cash out of there with it now for Mitchell. Looks to clear it off, does now to Pritchard. He'll get it into the front court. Two minutes to go, opening quarter. Low scoring affair, just seven combined points. Valley with five of those. Blackwell hands off to Moore. Now he's going to rise up for an 18 footer and air ball that one. Boy, tough start here for the Jackets. Quickly into the front court, Cooper. Baseline left on the hold. 
Gets it back out to Whitaker. Jumps it off now to Carnes. Down to the corner to Trenton McElfresh, who takes it in. Puts it up. Got it. A cat on a foul. Trenton McElfresh, the 5'10 senior, averaged three and a half points a game last year. Power goal to or power move to the basket along the baseline and just muscled that one up and in and threw the foul on Peyton Moore. So Mitchell already has two players with two fouls each as McElfresh gets his first basket, first bench points of the night for the Hawks, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play and a potential six-point advantage for Valley with 101 seconds remaining before the end of the first quarter. Well, you know, Mike McElfresh had a wide-open three-point shot, and he said, no, I'm going to take it to the baseline and get it the hard way. And he hits the foul shot to complete the three-point play, and it's a good start for the Hawks up 8-2. to two. Into the front court, Blackwell sends it right side to Cash. Squares up on McElfresh, picks up the dribble, looks to a back-cutting Barrett who takes it in, count it, and a foul. Cole Cooper tried to get over and set up the charge, but Barrett, their big man inside, able to take it strong to the rack. He has all four of Mitchell's points. And Cole Cooper picks up the foul. I think Michael Leachman begged to differ. He thought his man got over there in time to set up for the charge. You know, Mike, I think he was just a little bit too far underneath the basket to get that charge. Barrett hits the free throw, so he's got all five of Mitchell's points. And the Valley lead cut in half from six to three. Into the lane, McElfresh baseline to a new face in there for Valley. That's Isaac Carnes, a 5'10 junior, passing it off to Cooper, who had his shot rejected inside by Barrett. Here comes Mitchell. Skip pass into the front court to Cash. He drives it into the lane, jumps it off now to Pritchett, who can't get the three off. Now drives into the lane, lops it down low, and it's knocked away and stolen by Tucker. Outlet to Carnes. He runs into a Mitchell defender, and Valley loses it. Again, boy, Carnes was just, he didn't have his head up. He was looking backward and ended up losing the ball. There goes Pritchett, drives in, baseline to Barrett, open for a 12-footer. It is off the back of the rim. And Tucker the rebound, 35 seconds to go here in a fast-moving first quarter. And Michael Leachman says, slow it down, let's play for the final shot of the quarter. So mixed reviews here after one. Suck Valley has outplayed Mitchell. Paul, but they only have a three-point lead here. Well, most teams, Mike, have, has missed a lot of shots. There's no doubt about it. Right. We'll look at that percentage here in a little bit. Absolutely. Girls didn't shoot well. All right. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Here is Cooper. cross court it to Tucker. Wide open for three. It would not go. Rebound. Grabbed by Cooper with two. Out to land for a quick three, and it would not go, and that'll do it for the opening quarter of play. Both teams cold shooting. Valley slightly better. Leading by three after one on the Fast Eddie's Country Store and Deli scoreboard over Mitchell, eight to five. Back for the second quarter in a moment. It's Frank Valley School Basketball. So the flu is going around again, but it doesn't have to keep going around. Lessen your chances of getting the dreadful flu this season with a flu shot at Ingle King RX. During flu season, Ingle King RX provides flu vaccines in store with no appointment needed. Their immunization certified pharmacists can answer any questions you have about the flu shot, pneumonia, or other vaccinations. Stop by Ingle King RX to learn more. Located on Main Street in Mitchell. Colon cancer. It's called the silent killer because it usually has no outward symptoms until it's too late. A colonoscopy is the best way to detect and remove precancerous polyps. Screening helps save lives. If you are age 50 or older, talk to your doctor and get your colonoscopy scheduled at IU Health Paley Hospital. Colon cancer can be prevented. Commit to health and get checked. This is Springs Valley Senior Guard Zach Karn. Your power station for Blackhawk Sports is Q100 WFLQ. Shaky start for both teams as expected in the opening quarter, but Valley getting the better of things, leading 8-5. to five. Zach gets to have the ball to start the second quarter. As the new face in there, oh, getting away with an obvious travel with Leighton Allen right in front of Brett Williamson, the official. Man, oh man, how do you miss something that late? We've had two or three travels already in the ball game there that, that have not been caught. All right. Maybe the uh, LeBron James rule is in effect. Down the lane goes Kay Pritchett, throws up the runner. Michael Eastman said he warded off with an elbow. Should have been called for an offensive foul. I thought it maybe took one step too many. 
At any rate, the shot was missed, and Valley has it. As, uh, these are going to be some ugly percentages that we're going to reveal here just a little bit from the uh, first quarter. How about 3 of 16 for the uh, Hawks right now? That's about 20%. Here is Whitaker, cross crooks it now to land. Jackson picks up the dribble, in low to Tau, squares up, turns back the other way, and overshot the goal. Man. Now they're getting good luck. They just cannot get them to drop. I'll tell you what, Mike, also these baskets, they look awful tight to me. They are tight. That's one of the things. It is so hard to play here if you're a road team. Now the backdoor alley-oop into Hey, press it for the catch and lay in. That was a designed play, but the jackets worked perfectly. And Mitchell's on a 5 nothing run after Valley jumped out 8-2. to two. Hawks haven't scored for about four and a half minutes now. Here's Land on the right wing. Penetrates. Base find to McElfresh. Into the lane to Ryan. Tau who lays it up and in. Beautiful feed that time. As the Hawks work the ball around. And Ryan right in front of the rim has his first two. And Bally regains the three-point lead. Now it's 10 to 7. Almost two minutes into the second quarter. Pritchett drives it to the foul line. Dumps it off to Allen. Can't get the shot off. Picks up the dribble. Looks to get rid of it. Better hurry. Got to be a five-second count. And there it is. Nope. Got a timeout? Oh, no, a timeout. I thought, okay, I guess Doug Thomas was up. Well, Marty Niehaus got away with one in the uh, girls game on what potentially could have been a turnover for the Hawks, and they granted her the uh, timeout, and here probably just maybe a split second ahead of a five-second count, Doug Thomas burning a timeout here early in the second quarter with 6.02 to go in the half. On the Fast Eddie Country Store Delhi scoreboard, Valley's lead three at 10 to 7. Our girls' game earlier this evening won by Mitchell in overtime, 56 to 53. Valley girls played by foul trouble all night long, lost two. Leah and Jewel, and still nearly pulled that game out. So a terrific effort from the Lady Hawks in a losing effort. All right, Mitchell with the ball off the inbounds. Pritchett goes down to the corner to Allen. Can't get the shot off. In low to Barrett. Turns, leans in on Whitaker, puts it off the glass and in. Well, Braxton Barrett, a force inside. He's got seven of Mitchell's nine points. And again, Michael Leedsman thought he pushed off and should have been called for the offensive foul. And the Blue Jackets now, Mike, in the 2-3 zone. Here is Whitaker. Jumps it off to Whitaker. Uh, to, uh, Tucker, who misses it, rebound to Ryan Tao, who scoops it up and missed it. He got Barrett to commit himself and then tried to lay it up and in and could not. So Mitchell, a chance to take the lead as Pritchett kicked it off to Cam Blackwell. He airballed the three, and the rebound to Braden Whitaker. Hawks just can't seem to buy a basket right now. They're now four out of 20. That's 20% from the field. Here's Land deep on the left wing. Picks up the dribble, goes off now to Carnes. Zach also develops a three in the lane. It goes to Tucker. Stops at the foul line, 15-footer, too hard. Boy, nothing going for Valley right now. Here is Blackwell. Jumps it off now to Pritchett, defended by Land. Pritchett to the baseline, trying to get around Land. Cut off, throws it on the wing to Cash. Cash, right to shake three from Whitaker. Picks up the dribble, skip pass in low to Allen. Underneath the bear to lead in and scores two more. Jack is doing a great job of breaking down Valley inside, and the Jackets have their first lead of the contest. Timeout of the four by Valley, 4.38 to go first half. On the Fast Eddie's Country Store and Delhi scoreboard, Hawks trailing by one, 11-10. Back with more Valley basketball in just a moment. We're loyal to your family, your business, your future. Focused on you, Springs Valley Bank and Trust. You love our helpful staff, our warm, smiling faces. Latest tools and services, delivered by the friends you trust. We're loyal to your family, your business, your future. Focused on you, Springs Valley Bank and Trust. Hello to all you drivers from your friends at Valley Marathon, where 32-ounce fountain drinks are just 79 cents every day. Check out the daily special and our six different flavors of cappuccino and pick up a Marathon credit card application. Save money at the pump with a Jones Reward Card at Valley Marathon.
Back at the Hive and Mitchell, 4.38 to go first half, and Paul Valley finds themselves trailing for the first time tonight. And the biggest uh, reason for that, Mike, is the shooting woes that Valley's going through right now. They're getting good shots. A lot of uncontested shots. They're just not falling. Just 4 for 21 right now. Carnes has it deep on the left side, up top now to Tucker. They're in the backcourt up front. Ryan Tau, Jackson Land, and Braden Whitaker. So Michael Eastman has the starting five, and Valley just turned it over with a bad pass. Allen around Tucker all the way to the goal, scooped it up and missed it. Did everything right, but finished that off. Valley back the other way. Tip pass and land along the sidelines. Got it, throws it out top to Tucker. Christian spins away from his man, kicks it off to Zach. Carnage! Carnage! And he rattles it home. So Zach finally getting free on that left side and knocking down his first shot of the contest. And Valley back in front now by two at 13 to 11. I think that's the first three of either team, right, Mike? Yes, it is. And there's a foul. Cam Blackwell trying to move off a screen. And this foul will go on Braden Whitaker. That'll be his first. Just the second on Valley. As Isaac Carnes will check back in. He's the 5'10 junior. Last year averaged about a half a point a game. Ryan Powell with a breather. They get it in now to Cash out beyond the arc. He's up the dribble, skips it off now to Luke LaFever, who's checked in on the game now for Mitchell. He's a 5'9 sophomore. Out of the corner to Allen, back up to LaFever. They rotate it around to Cam Blackwell for a three that's off the rim, and Jackson lands with a good block out. Comes up with a loose ball. The card, back into the front court to Whitaker, left side now to Land. Jackson picks up the dribble, cross courts it. To Carnes. Back now on the right wing. Down to the corner goes to Cole Cooper. Picks up the dribble. Jumps it back out to Carnes and low to the other Carnes. Baseline to Cole Cooper and he knocks down a 15 footer from the right side. So good to see Cole Cooper get one. He missed three shots in the opening quarter and Valley with five in a row. They lead by four now. It's 15 to 11. They've led by as many as six. The Fever tries to get around Land. Comes off the screen, goes back to Blackwell, fakes the three, cross courts it to Cash, it's through his fingertips, and out of bounds. Five turnovers now for each team here in the first half of the play. Now, whatever Paul Michael Eastman said during the timeout has paid off. Now he has looked like a changed team out there. Well, they've been moving the ball extremely well, Mike. They're reversing the basketball against Mitchell's 2 3 zone. They're finding the open men, and finally, they got a couple of shots to drop. You know, I don't care what you do in basketball. If your shooting is good and you can score, that's the name of the game. Right. Hook pass off to Cole Cooper, right wing. Into the lane, it goes to Whitaker. Braden tries to penetrate. Now they swing it around to land. In low, they post up Whitaker. Turns a little fall away from 10. Good. And Braden Whitaker off this night as he knocks home his first basket of the year. And Valley's on a 7 nothing run. They've matched their biggest lead of six. Quickly into the front court, it goes off to Barrett. He had it knocked away, and we're going to get a foul called here on the Hawks. And that time, Valley put up some full-court pressure, and they just didn't rotate. And this foul will go on Isaac Carnes. That'll be his first. I like what Michael Leachman's doing. First game of the year, trying to keep uh, guys fresh here by going uh, eight and nine deep on his bench. Barrett at the free throw line. He's had a heck of a first half here. And this free throw is up. It is good. He already is in double figures now with 10. And try to pull Mitchell back to within four if he gets this one, which he does. So he's three for three at the line, 11 points. He's been the only one that's even done anything. And now the Hawks turn it over. Nope. They're going to call a... What do we have here? Oh, timeout called here by Michael Leachman. All right. Valley nearly turned it over in the backcourt there. As it is, the break in the action, 158 left first half. 17-13, Valley a four-point leader on Mitchell on the Fast City Country Star Delhi scoreboard. That was more Valley basketball right after this. When it comes to shopping local, most of us think of small, friendly mom-and-pop shops with their quality products and commitment to their community. You may not think of Smithville as a local company, but it is. An Indiana company built by Hoosiers for Hoosiers. 
nationally recognized for outstanding fiber internet, TV voice and security, as well as incredible customer service provided by your fellow Hoosiers. Go local! Visit SwitchToSmithville.com for the fastest internet and more. You'll be in good hands. This is Springs Valley senior forward Trent McElfresh. Don't miss a second of the action of Blackhawk basketball by keeping it tuned in here to Q100. One fifty-eight left in the first half. Valley clinging to a four-point lead. They, by the way, Mike, that time out was charged Mitchell. They got the turnover. Oh, okay, they did, didn't they? Okay, so if so, it'll go as a steal. So the Jackets have it now, trailing by four. Another new face in the lineup. Drew Simpson is checked in for the Jackets. He's a five-six junior. He's on the court with Cade Pritchett. They've got Luke Lefevre in there. Simpson off down to Pritchett, wide open for a three, and already banked it home. The former Valley player has pulled Mitchell back to within one as the Hawks cannot shake this feisty Mitchell team. One-point Valley lead now. Here is Kahn, works it around to Cooper, up top to Zach again. In fact, both Kahn's are in there. Isaac playing the post right now. Cooper has it, high post to Whitaker. Braden turns, looks. Kicked it back over to Zach. Quick three on the way. Good again. Zach, two straight three-point baskets. So the senior has worked on his perimeter shot. Full court pressure by Valley. They meet Allen. He lost the handle, got it back, and then throw it away. Jackson land at midcourt with the steal. Valley back up by four under a minute to go in the half. Whitaker drives the baseline all the way to the goal. Reverse left. Oh, just would not drop. Here's Allen back the other way. Picks up the dribble. Gets it off to Barrett. Over now to Pritchett. Let's see if Mitchell wants to play for the final shot of the half. Throw. Threw away. A throw away. Here's Jackson Land back on the other end. Missed it. Rebound grabbed by Zach Kahn. Oh, they're going to call Zach on the foul? What? You be kidding me. He had the ball. He had the ball. Oh, well, they did. Goodness. They called it on it. Wow. Unbelievable. He had the position on that over Simpson. And position. And Michael Eastman saying, what in the world are you calling? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, wow. That's, that's a rough one right there. Really, really rough one there. Valley would have had the ball instead. Mitchell has it. Valley with full court pressure. Pritchett in the backcourt. Throws it ahead now to Allen, who takes it down the lane. Oh, they're going to call Isaac Carnes on the foul. Same official that called the one on Zach here as Isaac will pick up his second foul. That will put Luke Lefever to the free throw line now to shoot two. For certified Angus beef steak served up the way you want in a great atmosphere, come to 33 Brick Street in French Lick. With a heated screened-in patio to make you feel like you're outside, come to 33 Brick Street in French Lick. You get the idea for good food all in a legendary atmosphere. 33 Brick Street in downtown French Lick. First free throw good by Lefevre. Mitchell hadn't missed a free throw yet. They still have it. They are 5-for-5 five five at the strike. And they just, Valley cannot shake this team. 20-18 to 18 now. 18 seconds left here before halftime. And now the Jackets are going to apply a little full-court pressure. Whitaker gets it into the front court. Now to McElfresh. Back off to Tucker. Down to 10 seconds to go in the half. Land out along the perimeter. Cross court it and off oh, the oh. hand of Christian Tucker and out of bounds. Each team with seven turnovers here in the first half. 4.4 seconds left to go. Now he'll apply full court pressure here to try to make it tough. Ball comes into Blackwell with three. He'll keep it up from half court and it slams off the backboard as time expires here in this first half of play. Well, uh, to a casual observer, it would look like Valley is simply outplaying Mitchell if you didn't have a scoreboard to look at. But since you do, the Hawks lead just two here at intermission. We'll start our halftime activities when we come back at the break on the Fast Eddie Country Store and Deli scoreboard from the Hive and Mitchell. It is the Spring Valley Blackhawks 20, the Mitchell Blue Jackets 18. You're listening to Spring Valley High School Basketball. Mom, whenever I'm back in school, I get to see all of my old friends and make new ones. 
Julie is my new BFF. Best friend forever? Well, yes. And she goes to Reeser Chiropractic Center, too. That's nice. Does she have scoliosis like you? No. She said chiropractic is just good for kids. Well, I guess she's right. She said just yesterday she was texting and not watching where she was walking and hit her head and hurt her neck pop. But she told her mom, and her mom said, time to see Dr. Lolita at Research Chiropractic Center. So, Mom, is it time for my next appointment yet? I'll have to check. I know the phone number. It is 812-723-2277. Yes, I know. Maybe I'll make one for the both of us. A message from Spring Valley Meadows and Prince Lake. As we age, recuperating from an illness or surgery may take more time than it used to. It's important for you to follow your doctor's discharge orders and include physical, occupational, and speech therapies when needed. Gimping on post-hospitalization therapy can cause potential falls and infections. So do it for yourself and do it for the ones you love. The road to recovery begins at Spring Valley Meadows and Prince Lake, where caring people make the difference. Call us at 936-9991. Holy cow! It's the Black Friday sales event, and it's in full swing right now! And no, it's not Harry Carey, it's John Storm for Bedford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram! And that's right, the Black Friday sales event is in full swing with new 2017 Chrysler Pacificas with 0% interest, up to 72 months, and a thousand dollars cash back! So hurry into Bedford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for their greatest deal of the year! Hello to all you drivers from your friends at Valley Marathon, where 32-ounce fountain drinks are just 79 cents every day. Check out the daily special and our six different flavors of cappuccino and pick up a Marathon credit card application. Save money at the pump with the Jones Reward Card at Valley Marathon. Train engineers put our heating and cooling products through almost every test imaginable. So while you're firing up a pot of coffee, they're firing golf balls into a compressor. Testing like this is the reason Train is so reliable. And why our engineers tend to have a wicked slice. For year-round comfort and savings in your home, count on Edwards Heating and Cooling, your train dealer in Mitchell. For a free estimate, call 849-5489. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Spring Valley High School Basketball. You're listening to the 6,000-watt sports voice of the Valley, WFLQ, French Lick, Indiana. Mike Campbell's on the wall with Paul Stroud back at the Hive in Mitchell, the lid lifter for the Spring Valley Blackhawks. And, uh, well, they've got the lead at halftime, but I don't know how much more you can say about uh, the way they play. Their passing has been crisp, but when it comes to shooting, well, that's uh, kind of a different kind of story. Well, I think they did pick up their shooting a little bit in that second quarter, Mike, but still, it's obviously not where they want it to be. But it's also only the first game of the season. So, uh, you know, that's something you can always work on, but you're going to have to get some more of those shots to fall. Let's take a look at the scoring through the first two periods for Mitchell. Valley has really struggled with containing their big man inside, Braxton Barrett, who's 6'3 and probably goes about 220 pounds or so. He has muscled his way to 11 points here in the first half on four baskets and three of three at the line. Kate Pritchett had two field goals, including one three-pointer, so he has five. And the other two points coming on a pair of free throws by Luke Lefevre in the second quarter. Three starters have yet to score. Jared Phillips, Cam Blackwell, and Nate Moore. And then Doug, Clark, uh, Doug Thomas, excuse me, has used Bruce Simpson, Clayton Allen, and Edric Cash off the bench. None of those have been able to tally. So 11 out of Braxton Barrett leading the way. Two fouls each on Phillips and Nate Moore. Nobody even committed a foul. Those were the only four whistled on Mitchell. For Valley in the first half, a lot of balance. Jack Carnes leading the way. He buried a couple of three-pointers in that first half, but he has a total of six here at halftime. In fact, he has Valley's only two triples in the opening half. Five for Christian Tucker. He got Valley out of the gate with those first five on two baskets, one out of two at the free throw line. Trenton McElfresh, an old-fashioned three-point play, a basket and a free throw off the bench. And two points each from Braden Whitaker on a second-quarter field goal, Ryan Tell. Had a bucket in the second quarter. Ditto for 
Cole Cooper. Jackson Land starting, and Isaac Carnes off the bench have played for the Hawks, but have not tallied. So six from Zach Carnes leading the way. Isaac Carnes picked up two first half fouls. Nobody else for Valley had more than one. Hawks led eight to five after one. They get outscored though by Mitchell 13 to 12 in the second quarter, and they lead by two here on the Fast Eddie scoreboard at 20. To 18. We'll step aside for a quick break. When we return, Paul Stroud takes a look at our first half statistics. This is Spring Valley High School Basketball. Hi, this is Lynn at Research Chiropractic Center. When was the last time you saw your chiropractor? Been a while? It's time to make another appointment. Good health is an everyday concern. It's something that should be worked at. Dr. Lolita is just the person to advise and help you with your own personal health care plan. She's an expert on prevention and good health. Make an appointment today. Call Reeser Chiropractic Center at 812-723-2277. So the flu is going around again, but it doesn't have to keep going around. Lessen your chances of getting the dreadful flu this season with a flu shot at Ingle King RX. During flu season, Ingle King RX provides flu vaccines in store with no appointment needed. Their immunization certified pharmacists can answer any questions you have about the flu shot, pneumonia, or other vaccinations. Stop by Ingle King RX to learn more. Located on Main Street in Mitchell. <laughs> And we're back at Mitchell High School where we have halftime with a halftime score. The Springs Valley Blackhawks 20, the Mitchell Blue Jackets 18. Let's take a look now at the first half team statistics. First of all, for the Blackhawks, they were 6 of 10 from two-point field goals for only 32%. They were 2 of 8 from three-point range for 25%. All total from the floor, 8 of 27 for 30%. And I'm sure Coach uh, Leachman wanted to see that pick up in the second half. They were one of uh, three from the free throw line for 33%. They did an outstanding job on the boards in the first half. They pulled down 17 total rebounds, seven offensive rebounds, 10 defensive rebounds, and they had seven turnovers. For the Mitchell Blue Jackets, they were five of 13 from two-point range for 38%. Only uh, one of five from three-point range for 20%. And a 6 of 18 from the floor, not much better than Valley at 33%. They did shoot their free throws very well. They were 5 of 5 from the charity stripe for 100%. And they only pulled down 7 rebounds, no offensive rebounds, and 7 defensive rebounds. And they had also 7 turnovers. So, two-point game here at halftime, 20 to 18. We've got uh, 16 minutes left. And this could be a barn burner as the girls game. Was it went into overtime in our first game here in the doubleheader uh, here from Mitchell High School. We'll be back for the all the exciting second half action after these messages. Colon cancer. It's called the silent killer because it usually has no outward symptoms until it's too late. A colonoscopy is the best way to detect and remove precancerous polyps. Screening helps save lives. If you are age 50 or older, talk to your doctor and get your colonoscopy scheduled at IU Health Paley Hospital. Colon cancer can be prevented. Commit to health and get checked. Your car is not just a mode of transportation, it is an investment. To protect that investment, take it to the guys at Wollstone Automotive in Mitchell to keep it in tip-top condition. David Wollstone, Dickie Gaines, and the crew have a combined half-century of experience so you know your vehicle is in good hands. From the simplest of tune-ups to major overhauls, you can count on Wollstone Automotive to do the job right. Trust your car's maintenance to the pros at Wollstone Automotive on Main Street in downtown Mitchell. Call 849-4012. This is Springs Valley Senior Center, Ryan Tao, and you're listening to Blackhawks Basketball on Q100. Back again at the Hive in Mitchell. Just about set to go with the third quarter as Hawks leading by two at 20 to 18. By the way, both these teams played JV last night down in French Lick. 
On the uh, girls' side, they lost 40 to 12, and the boys, unfortunately, they will not uh, be able to experience an undefeated season this year as they lost in a close one, 41 to 38. Oh, that's right. Last year they had a real good season. They were undefeated. Yeah. You better believe it. 20 and 0. Well, I tell you what, Mike. If I was either coach here at halftime, I know what I would be saying. Hey, look, you got to keep shooting. You can't quit shooting. You're getting good shots. Let's see if we can get some to fall. There's a drive by Christian Tucker. Oh, he got pushed off, oh. and no call. He got run off the floor, but then Jackson Land with a steal. Hooked it underneath the crank, and away it up and in. Good job by Jackson Land to make up for it as he stole it and then got it to Christian, who recovered. And Valley with the first basket of the third quarter. Their lead is 4, 22 to 18. Cam Blackwell into the lane. It goes getting away with an obvious travel with Phillips. And now ball knocked away, and Valley comes out of there with it. Ball batted out of the hands of Jackson Land. He's massaging his wrist. He got slapped across the wrist, and they still didn't call that. I'm not really sure. Maybe the officials are also, must be their first game of the year, too, or something. I'm not sure. At any rate, Valley with the basketball at a four point lead. Into the front court, Carnes skips it left wing out of Jackson. Land works it over to Whitaker. And Braden spins his way into the lane, and oh, they got a call for it. Now they call Jelly, and that was now, not Jelly. No, not <laughs> even close. My goodness. Wow. Uh, actually, that was a pretty good spin move by Braden. Yeah, I thought so. So Valley with a turnover there. Mitchell gets it back. Cam Blackwell on the floor, along with Peyton Moore, Cade Pritchett, Braxton Barrett, and Jarrett Phillips. They work it into Barrett. He leans in, stripped away nicely by. Braden Whitaker, Mitchell fans wanted a foul, didn't get it. Here's Christian Tucker back the other way, out beyond the arc. Tends it over on the near side to Karn. Zach works it around now to Whitaker. Valley with their original five to start the half. Nice speed off to Brian Powell, his 15-footer from beyond the foul line off the back iron. Moore rebounds it now for Mitchell, and he lost it off his leg. No, he dribbled it off of Zach Karn instead. I don't know if I call the play sloppy, Paul, but no, still, no. it's just, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like they're, neither team is really just clicking on all cylinders. Let's right just now. call it the first game of the season. There we go. Team, Mike. <laughs> and you know coaches hate having to oh, play know. a conference game right off the bat. Oh, yeah. I, I think I mentioned that before the last couple of years. You know, that's right. If I were a coach in Valley, I might want that schedule changed a little bit. Well, actually, both teams play their first two games against conference opponents. Valley has Orleans a week from Friday, and on the same night, it is uh, Mitchell taking on Crawford County as Peyton Moore gets in the lane. Pull-up jumper is good, and Valley's lead back down to two at 22-20. Land on the right side. He's the baseline to Whitaker and low to towel. Around Barrett, skips it off to Carnes. Up top now to Tucker. He fakes the three. He drives it down the lane, baseline to land. Jackson for three would not go. And the rebound pulled out of there by Phillips. Mitchell Kintyre takes the lead. Phillips all the way down the lane. Scoops it up to the side. Got to stop the ball, Mike. Yep. He went uh, coast to coast, and you can't allow that. The ball has to be stopped. 22 apiece now. As this Mitchell team just simply will not go away. Tucker goes back to Carnes. Looks like Mitchell, the ball, extending their defense a little bit. It's gone to man here. They were zone pretty much the whole second quarter. They post up land, can't get the shot off. Baseline to Tucker. Christian hands it back off to Whitaker. Back over to Christian now on the left wing. Tucker moves it out to the middle of the floor and gives off now to Carnes. Back to Tucker again. Over to Land. Jackson looking for a cutter through the lane. Instead goes up top to Tucker. Back to Tau. Back to Christian. Stop it. Go move. All the way to the rack. Lays it up and in. Nice move, Mike. Very nice move. You call it. Stop and go. Hesitation. Nine points now for Tucker. Valley back up two at 24-22. Four and a half to go. Here is Moore. They leave him open. He drives it on Carnes. Lost the handle. Picked up by Braden Whitaker. Waits for traffic to clear and gets it off to Carnes. Quickly into the front court to Tucker. Christian down the lane. Skip pass. Weak side underneath the land who in heavy traffic puts it up no good. Rebound tip free. Grabbed by Phillips. Phillips runs the floor. Down the lane he goes. Holders his move. Puts it up. Good. Oh, are they going to count it? I think so. Are you kidding me? It looked like before he put that up, they called a foul. Instead, they're going to count the basket for Phillips. His fourth point. Zach Carnes, the foul, is his second. A chance at a three-point play. 
And Mitchell could go back in front here with 4.08 to go in the third quarter. And they do. They I was the only thing you could call that, Mike, for Phyllis was a Euro step. Yeah. <laughs> they still haven't missed the free throw. They're six for six. Valley's only two out of five. Halfway through the third quarter, it's Mitchell by one. And out of control, Carnes down to the corner. Whitaker picked it up, pull up 12-footer. Off the rim, no good. And losing it out of bounds that time was Peyton Moore. Oh, and they're going to say Valley was the last to touch it. There wasn't a Valley player around there. Yeah. Well, Christian yeah. Tucker was uh, behind Moore, but I don't know if he made any contact. Full court pressure by the Hawks. Moore gets it ahead to Barrett on the right side, being hot, and threw it wildly. It skipped off the backboard. Valley comes out of there with it. Pass up ahead to Land. Hooks it off now to Whitaker. Three on the way by Braden is well short. And Phillips out there runs into Tucker, and they got to call the offensive foul here on Jarrett Phillips. He just warded off with an elbow that time. Oh, my goodness. And they're going to call a foul on Christian Tucker. Phillips was out of control. Tucker was just standing there. Actually, it was backpedaling. And as Phillips came through, he used an elbow and pushed off and got away with it. And Michael Leachman, again, upset with Brett Williamson. As, again, tough, tough calls here. Valley girls got a lot of tough ones in their game. And you just never seem to get a lot of breaks here at Mitchell. We need to get that other official, Rod Dowhauer, into it a little <laughs> bit more, Mike. I guess so. All right. Here is Phillips spinning on oh, Tucker. Double dribble. Phillips jumper, lost the handle, got it back. Out of control. And they've got a call. Oh, they're going to call another foul on Christian Tucker. Oh, Phillips again just blatantly out of control, just kept pushing off, and they're going to call Tucker on yet another foul. And it's got to be tough for Michael Leachman here to control his temper. And Brett Williamson, the, with the new rule in effect, the warning has been issued to the Valley bench. It's not a technical foul, but if they get warned again, it would be a technical foul. So, again... Tough, tough call. There's a three that is missed. And, oh, Blackwell off of Michael Fresh's back. Now it's getting pretty blatantly pitiful here. You know, you try to give the officials a chance here, and when they're missing obvious calls, you just got a reporter. Here's Zach Carn. Can't get the three to go. Rebound pulled out of there by Moore. Now he's just not been able to buy a basket. Into the lane, another foul here on Braden Whitaker. Well, I guess... Well, he can't even breathe on these guys without getting a foul called. 25-24, Mitchell by one. 2.51 to go here in the third quarter. Now he's already been called for as many fouls here in the first five minutes of the third quarter as they did in the entire first half. Here's Moore trying to lob it in, and what do we have? An illegal screen called on the jacket. So all we're getting... Whistles here. Cam Blackwell called for the illegal screen. And that, after Valley called for four fouls so far, that's the first foul called on Mitchell here in the second half. Again, Hawks with a chance to take the lead. They have managed his four points. Here is Tons. Clears it away to McElfresh. Threaten out between the circles. Hands off now to Whitaker. Braden on the hold. Free throw line now to Tau. Lobs it in low, and it's thrown away. It'll be out of bounds to the Hawks. As Valley uh, got lucky there, and at that pass ill-advised, and uh, Valley, by all rights, should have lost the ball. But they'll keep it here on the offensive end. And shooting has simply been the story here tonight. They post up Whitaker down the left side around his man, throws it to nobody in particular, retrieved near the midcourt line by Zach Carnes. Now he seems way out of sync right now. Here is Carnes trying to shake and bake against Blackwell and a whistle. Oh, jersey. Yeah. That's a intentional foul, isn't it? I would think so. Get Peyton Moore on this personal foul. That'll be his third. That'll be the second That's another foul. point of emphasis this year, Mike. You're supposed yeah. to call those intentional fouls if it's intentional. Right. I know it. And also on the warning, uh, you don't have to give a warning, but, you, but a referee can give a warning. Hawks is 2 of 9 shooting here in this third quarter. Cole Cooper back in there off to Whitaker. Cross-courts it to McElfresh. 
He drives the baseline, hooks it in low, lost, picked up by Cooper. He drives in. He leaves. He puts it up and in. Nice move by Cole Cooper to get Barrett off his feet and then able to duck under and lay it up and in. And Valley back up now by one, 26-25 with a minute 40 to go here in the third quarter. Phillips on the left side against Cooper, drives it into the lane, leans in, scoops it up and got it. Garrett Phillips, all seven of his points have come here in this quarter. He is just muscling his way to the goal. Here is Whitaker. Moves it around now to McElfresh. Threaten deep on the right wing. Back up top to Whitaker. On the high post to Powell. Hands back to Whitaker. He drives in on Pritchett. Leads in. Puts it up. Got it. Nice power move to the bucket by Braden Whitaker as he got a step on his defender. He's got four. Hawks back up by one. Here is Phillips. Trying to shake and bake on Cooper. Stolen away by Zach Carn. Zach, one on two, beats his man down the lane, scoops it up, no go, but a foul. Zach, with those quick hands and quick feet, got down quickly, and he almost spun the layup in. He will be at the line twice. As that foul call will go on Cam Blackwell, that'll be his second, the team's third. And Zach, 0 for 2 at the free throw line, now makes it 0 for 3 as he just cannot get a foul shot to go, and Free throws hurt the girls tonight, Paul, and the boys right now just two of six at the line. Right. If I remember correctly, Zach's usually a pretty good free throw shooter. Yeah, he is. And he missed that one as well. Man, oh, man. So Valley to two of seven at the line. They still lead by one with under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Just keep thinking Valley's going to break out at any time here, but it hasn't happened as we... Near the end of the third. Feed in low to Barrett. Leans his way. It's blocked away by Isaac Carnes. Picked up by Jackson Land. He'll slow it down, wait for traffic to clear. And then Phillips reaches in and pokes the ball out of bounds from Jackson. With 40 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Hawks have had just an atrocious shooting night. Hopefully they'll warm up here in the fourth quarter. There's Carnes out near the 10-second line. Simpson back in there now for Mitchell. McElfresh on the right wing. Looks for somewhere to go. Clears it up top now to land. Oh, and they're going to call Jackson on a travel. I think that was probably the, the best traveling call we've had this evening. Also, Mike, uh, here in the third quarter, Mitchell has seven turnovers. But the big weapon for the Jackets has been uh, Jared Phillips. Yeah. He's got the five rebounds and seven points. Right. All right, final 20 seconds to the third. Mitchell can regain the lead with a basket. Here is Allen. Up top now to Pritchett. Looks up to the clock, down to 10. As Valley stays back in their zone. Over to Phillips to a cutting Barrett who leans in, double clutches, and got the roll. Braxton Barrett, first point for the quarter. One second to go. And here's a foul in the backcourt on Cade Pritchett. It won't be any free throws here. Pritchett just is first, but it will get Valley a little closer to the bonus anyway. Braxton now has 13, our seventh lead change. So with one second to go, Todd will heave it up from 60 feet and it slams off the backboard as we end the third quarter. Valley led after one and two, but it's Mitchell by one after three. 29-28 on the Fast Eddie's Country Store and Delhi scoreboard. Back with the fourth quarter in a moment. This is Spring Valley High School Basketball. Delicious granny cake with pecan sauce, a specialty worth the trip to Spring Mill Inn. This is Taylor Fleetwood, sales manager, asking you to bring the family for a bounteous buffet and big selection of desserts to satisfy any palate. Come to the Spring Mill Inn and watch the birds feed as you enjoy lunch or dinner buffet featuring a big salad bar, colorful vegetables, great tasting chicken, fish, and meats, and delicious desserts, including granny cake. And stop by the gift shop after a great meal at the Spring Mill Inn. You've worked hard to build and protect your estate throughout your lifetime. Enjoy the confidence that comes from knowing all you've worked for may be preserved for your heirs. Please call Jamie Sullivan, Senior Vice President of Investments of Sullivan Financial Consulting of Raymond James, located in Mitchell at 849-2670. Jamie can help design a comprehensive plan suited for your family's future financial needs. Call Jamie Sullivan today at 849-2670. Raymond James and Associates Incorporated, member New York Stock Exchange, SIPC. This is Springs Valley Junior Guard Jackson Land. Hear every dribble, pass, and shot of Blackhawk basketball on the Sports Voice of the Valley, Q100. 
With Paul Stroud and our statistician, McKenna Curley, Mike Hamilton at the Hive in Mitchell. Now we opening the season on the road with a conference game, and they trail by one as we start this final quarter, 29-28. to 28. Garrett Phillips out of the corner for three, missed it. Ball tipped around, and it is run down by Christian Tucker. Tried to save it into nobody in particular, but Jackson Land happened to be at the right place at the right time to come away with it. Leading scores through three, Braxton Barrett has 13 to lead Mitchell for Valley. Christian Tucker with nine. Here is Tucker, drives it on Moore, takes it down the lane, and we're going to get a reach in. That should be a two-shot foul. It is as Moore continues to struggle with fouls. That is his fourth. He's had a tough time tonight starting Christian Tucker. That is also the 15th foul. So Christian, one of two at the line. Again, Valley just two of seven at the line tonight. And this free throw by Christian is good. So he becomes the first Hawk in double figures. He's got 10. And we have our third tie of the night now at 29. Second free throw around, and it wouldn't bounce in. Ball tipped out long, but Cade Pritchett there. Pritchett will work it into the front court, being hawked by Isaac Karn. Off to Cam Blackwell. He's been shut down for the most part tonight. Off to Pritchett. Clears the way up top now to Leighton Allen. Allen goes back to Pritchett. Down to the corner. Blackwell can't get the three off. To Pritchett. Back to Blackwell in the corner. Jumps it back out to Phillips for a three. He left it short. Long rebound by Cash. Back up, and it wouldn't go. Oh, he got his own rebound. How about three for a dollar, and there's a travel on Jarrett Phillips. Boy, the Hawks have got to do a better job here uh, blocking out. They've got Braden Whitaker and Ryan Tao resting on the bench. They start this quarter with Christian Tucker, Jackson Land, Cole Cooper, Trenton McElfresh, and Isaac Carr. So it's basically almost all their bench guys, with maybe the exception here of Tucker and Land. Good backdoor cut in. What a trend. Michael Fraction puts it up and in. Great feed by Isaac Carnes and Jackson able to finish it off. His first two of the contest. And the Hawks back in front now by two. Here's a lob down to the corner to Blackwell. Can't get the shot off. Up top to Phillips. Thought about the three. Won't take it. Off to Pritchett. Left wing. Cage. Couple of dribbles. Hands back to Blackwell. Long three on the way. Comes up short. And Michael Fresh able to corral the rebound. Well, I'll tell you what, when you basically have your bench in there right now, giving those uh, starters some much-needed rest here, Paul, that's got to help Valley down the stretch. No doubt about it, Mike. Here is Carnes, left side. Up now to Christian. Long Three on the way is off the back of the rim. It was on line, just shot it a little bit long. Christian still looking for his first triple of the night. 5.45 to go, Valley by two. Now we're going to see the starters come back in for the Hawks. Up top here is Pritchett. Out beyond the arc. Lops it on the high post to Cash. Turns has it knocked away. Oh, they're going to call a foul here. And they're going to get Cole Cooper on this one. So Cole will pick up his second personal foul. That is the 15th foul. Both teams have been whistled for five. Hawks still struggling from the field. Just 12 out of 39. That's 31%. 2 out of 12 from three-point range. 17%. While Mitchell to 17% from three-point range. 1 out of 6. 11 of 27. And breaking up a 3 was Phillips that time. But again, another offensive rebound for the Jackets. And that's killing Valley right now, Paul. Well, i tell you what. And their first offensive rebounds, Mike, we're here in the fourth quarter. They have three of them now. Right. Pritchett. Tried to go in low to Barrett, and the Hawks able to steal him off and knock that pass out of bounds. And now we're going to get a timeout called here by Doug Thomas. It'll be a full timeout. Comes with 5.17 left in this one. A close one, just like the girls. 31-29 on the Fast Steady scoreboard. Valley a two-point leader. Back with more Blackhawks basketball in just a moment. Hello, my name is Ross Key. I speak farming and represent Springs Valley Bank and Trust, a true community bank committed to agriculture. As an ag specialist, I am committed to working with our customers and supporting the economic strength of our agricultural community. I look forward to building new and lasting relationships with farmers, businesses, and the people in the communities in which we live and work. Loyal to you, your family, and your future. Springs Valley Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Focused on you. Springs Valley Bank and Trust. 
In today's fast-paced society, we depend on our cars to get us where we need to go with work, kids, and a busy lifestyle. We don't have time for breakdowns. That's why so many people take their vehicles to B&L Auto Repair in Mitchell to get back on the road as soon as possible. With three full-time mechanics on duty, including owner Clifton Odell, B&L will use computer diagnostics to determine your problem so they can get it repaired and have you on your way in no time. Trust the team with a decade of complete automotive computer diagnostic service to the area. B&L Auto Repair at the corner of 8th and Grissom in Mitchell. 849 4684. Third quarter. Back to the hive in Mitchell. 517 left in this one. Hawks lead by two, but the Jackets have the basketball as they work it into Cam Blackwell, who can't get the little jump hook to go from five feet away on the right side. And Zach Carnes comes out of there with it for the Hawks. Now, Sally with their original lineup in there. Land, Whitaker, Cow, Tucker, and Carnes. Here's a pull-up three that just would not go. Rebound battle for Ryan Cow comes out of there with it and will dribble out of trouble and clear it off now to Tucker. Tough night for Christian. I'll tell you what, he's, he is a good three-point shooter, and don't worry, as the season wears along, things are going to work out well. Back his way in, Whitaker. Kicks it off to Cow. Three for Ryan. And good. Oh, an unexpected triple by the big man who stepped in on the court and hits a huge shot for the Hawks. A, his fifth point of the ball game. This is the second or third three of the night for the Hawks. Here's a baseline drive. Pritchett runs in. Missed the shot. Rebound battle for it. Pritchett got it back and then locks it out of bounds. And it'll go back over to Valley as the Hawks here. Have stepped it up defensively, Paul. They have gone almost half the fourth quarter without giving up a point to Mitchell. Meanwhile, they have scored six points of their own to open up a five-point lead. Well, they're mixing up their defenses a little bit here in the fourth quarter, Mike. They're going from a man to a 1-2-2 two, two, to a 2-3. Two, here is Carnes. Works it into the front court. Off now to land. Jackson on the left wing. Belling up is Phillips. Off on the high post to Whitaker. Hands off to Carnes on the right wing. Looks for somewhere to go. Now drives it into the lane and a whistle, and we're going to get a hand check here, I think, on Mitchell. Actually, it was a forearm check all the way down the lane. Okay. It'll go on Cam Blackwell. That'll be his third. That is the sixth team foul now on Mitchell, so the next one will put Valley into the bonus. 3.56 to go. Valley by five. Hook pass. Ooh, almost stolen by Allen, but Tucker able to come away with it. Over it comes now to Carnes. Left wing now to Ryan Tau where he hit the three a moment ago. Now spot up. 15 footer gun. Braden Whitaker. And the Hawks have really opened it up here in the fourth quarter. They're on an 8 nothing run and they lead by 7. Barrett. Oh, up and down. No call. Here is Pritchett. Had it knocked away but picked up by Barrett. He leans in. He throws up the runner and got it. Boy, again, I don't understand how varsity officials can miss Blake travels. That time Barrett just went up and down and when you have three sets of eyes to look at it and not call it, just defies imagination. All right, now he's still with a five-point lead as we come up on three minutes remaining now. Here's Carnes out front being hawked by Blackwell. Left side to land, back up top to Carnes again. Jack, high post to Tau. Ryan drives it on Barrett. Right to the goal and lays it up and in. What a move by Ryan Tau as he beat the big man off the dribble. He took that to the basket with authority, Mike. He did. 38-31, 7 for Tau, 7-point Valley lead. There is Blackwell, baseline right. Knocked away. Stolen by Zach Carn. Gets it ahead now to Tucker. Two on three, so they'll slow it up and work some time off the clock. 2.25 to go. Valley owns a seven-point lead. Land flashes out to the right wing. Baseline, it comes to Tucker. Christian, free throw line to Tau. Rises up for a 10-footer, left it short. Rebound tapped around, and Cade Pritchett comes out of there with it now for the jacket. Cade into the front court. Stop top of the key. Works it around now to Phillips as we come up on two minutes remaining. Pritchett well out beyond the arc. Thought about the three. Instead goes down to the corner to Blackwell. He can't get the shot off. Back to Pritchett. Penetrates to the foul line. Back to Blackwell along the baseline. In low to Barrett for a 10-footer. Left it short. And then he pushed off on Whitaker that time. Going for the rebound. No call. Braden still able to come up with it. And as he gets it off to Zach Carnes, Michael Eastman comes running out to call timeout. It comes with 146 left. 
On the Fast Eddie's Country Store and Deli scoreboard, Valley a seven-point leader, 38-31. Back with more Valley Hoops in just a moment. You've got a great watchdog. He barks every time someone comes to the door, devoted to your protection. But he can't lock your doors, turn on your lights, or set the temperature of your house. However, those things are part of what a Honeywell Lyric Home Automation System from Smithville Security can provide. Keep your dog and all other things you love safe. Visit smithfieldsecurity.com today to discover how affordable peace of mind can be. Simple. Smart. Safe. Smithville. Caring people make the difference at Springs Valley Meadows in French Lake. You can feel it the minute you walk into Springs Valley Meadows. We're the experts in long-term care, not just doing a job, but following a calling. We're here to help you and your family find answers, solutions, and peace of mind. In fact, we become an extension of your family. For more information about Springs Valley Meadows, Highway 145, French Lake, visit ASCSeniorCare.com. Or call Springs Valley Meadows at 936-9991. This is Spring Valley Senior Forward Isaac Carnes. Thanks for listening to Blackhawk Basketball right here on Q100. Out of the Valley's timeout. Hawks with the basketball. Tucker hands off to Ryan Tell. Wisely circles it back out. Valley's going to try to use some time on the clock here. They lead by seven with a minute 30 remaining. They have pulled away from the jackets here in the fourth quarter after Mitchell led by one after three. So let's see how well the Hawks can take care of the basketball. And what they call here? What they call? Oh, they called Zach Carnes for an illegal screen? Are you kidding me? I didn't see a screen set no, there. There wasn't. Because <laughs> uh, what, what the Valley was called. doing, like they were getting into their delay offense. Right. <laughs> Where was that screen? <laughs> Third foul on Zach, sixth on the team. So Mitchell, a little bit of life here with a minute 15 to go. Out of the corner, a three-point try. Comes up short. And Phillips saves it, but right into Braden Whitaker. So the Hawks will try to run some more time off the clock. With a minute three to go, Carnes will bring it up here into the front court to Lefebvre. Baseline now to Tau. Ryan gets it off now to Whitaker. You got to figure Mitchell's got to start fouling at some point here. There goes Christian Tucker down the lane and then pulls it back out wisely to run some more time off the clock. In low to Whitaker, skip pass to Ryan Tao, who lays it up. Oh, he got clobbered. Oh, he got knocked to the floor. He's okay. He'll shoot two as Blackston Barrett. You know, as physical as Blackston Barrett has been tonight, Paul, that's his first, first foul. foul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I'll tell you what, Mike, I think he's a little bit more physical on the offensive end than he right. is on defense. Otherwise, hey, I want to make sure I give a shout out to our. Good friend and Springs Valley's number one fan, Denny Weicker, in the building here uh, tonight. His grandson, Zach, an outstanding game. Need to get him to work on those free throws just a little bit. All right, uh, Denny, I'm sure he'll take care of that. And we'll get uh, get that taken care of. First free throw is good by Ryan. He has quietly had a nice game, eight points, and make it nine as he drops that one in, and Valley... Solidly in the driver's seat, leading by nine with 40 seconds to go. Off it comes to Pritchett. Down the lane he goes. Switches hands in midair, miss it. But the rebound put back up and in by Michael Bell, who checked in there. And now a quick timeout called here by the Jackets as Valley's lead cut to seven now at 40 to 33. And this will be a full timeout. So we'll take a break as well with. Just under 30 seconds left in this one on the Fast Eddie scoreboard. Hawks leading by seven at the highs in Mitchell. Back with four. Blackhawks basketball right after this. In the market for a new or used vehicle? How about stopping by Bedford Ford Lincoln or Bedford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for the largest selection of cars, trucks, SUVs in the market anywhere with over 20 used trucks to choose from in stock, over 100 used vehicles to choose from. Prices starting at $19.97. We have every make model available under the sun, so hurry in to Bedford Ford Lincoln, Bedford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on Highway 37 South in Bedford. Train engineers put our heating and cooling products through almost every test imaginable. So while you're firing up a pot of coffee, they're firing golf balls into a compressor. Testing like this is the reason Train is so reliable. And why our engineers tend to have a wicked slice. 
For year-round comfort and savings in your home, count on Edwards Heating and Cooling, your train dealer in Mitchell. For a free estimate, call 849-5489. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. Now we're breaking the full court pressure up to seven. Out of the final 20 seconds, I'm not sure the Jackets even want to foul. Now there is Luke LeFever fouling Zach Carnes. So Zach will get a chance back at the free throw line again here. On the fever, that is his first personal foul. So it wasn't the uh, prettiest tonight, Paul, but it's looking like the Hawks are going to start the season on a winning note. Well, they had a good fourth quarter, Mike, and that's very encouraging as a coach to see uh, see, see your team struggle through three quarters and all of a sudden come out in the fourth quarter, play some pretty good defense, and finally knock some shots down. So Zach to shoot a one and one on the 18th foul. Fires this one up. Got it. So he finally gets off the snide as he is one for five. Good balance tonight. That's seven for Zach. 41-33. By the way, a couple of former outstanding Hawk players in the building tonight. Uh, just down below me, Josh Weddle, who graduated, one of the uh, top uh, kids that graduated. Josh Weddle, Logan Russell, right, Brian yeah. Selby, and Chase Cresselia. So... Now we're having to replace four players. Second one, good by Zach, putting the icing on the cake. He's got eight. Valley by nine with 11 seconds to go, and the Hawks are going to win their season opener for the second straight year. All the way to the goal there is Peyton Moore for his fourth point. Valley doesn't even have to inbound it. Cole Cooper will just hold the ball. Time will run out, and the Hawks open the night. 2017-2018 campaign on a winning note here. Mitchell stayed with them for the better part of three quarters, but the Hawks scoring the first eight of the fourth quarter of play to establish a lead, and they know how to protect it, and they will come away with a victory here tonight on opening night. Good balance here for the Hawks. Kept their turnovers to a minimum, and when it counted there in the fourth quarter, the Hawks able to get the job done. So they open the season on a positive note. Also a conference victory as well. Always good to start 1-0 in league play. For hand-breaded fish and chips, tenderloins that are second to none, homemade soups, and a large selection of craft beverages, all served up in a great atmosphere. Come to 33 Brick Street in French Lake for, for a variety of other menu items, even for the most discriminating appetites and a tantalizing kids' menu come to 33 Brick Street in French Lake. You get the idea? The good food all in a legendary atmosphere. It's 33 Brick Street in downtown French Lake. We'll be back to recap all of tonight's action in a moment. The final score here this evening on the Fast Studies Country Store and Deli scoreboard, it was the Spring Valley Blackhawks 42, the Mitchell Blue Jackets 35. You're listening to Spring Valley High School Basketball. So the flu is going around again, but it doesn't have to keep going around. Lessen your chances of getting the dreadful flu this season with a flu shot at Ingo King RX. During flu season, Ingo King RX provides flu vaccines in store with no appointment needed. Their immunization certified pharmacists can answer any questions you have about the flu shot, pneumonia, or other vaccinations. Stop by Ingo King RX to learn more. Located on Main Street in Mitchell. This year, we will lose more people to colon cancer than to breast cancer or prostate cancer. But colon cancer can be prevented. A colonoscopy is the best test to detect and remove precancerous polyps. Screening helps save lives. If you are age 50 or older, talk to your doctor and get your colonoscopy scheduled at IU Health Paley Hospital. Colon cancer can be prevented. Commit to health and get checked. Delicious granny cake with pecan sauce, a specialty worth the trip to Spring Mill Inn. This is Taylor Fleetwood, sales manager, asking you to bring the family for our bounteous buffet and big selection of desserts to satisfy any palate. Come to the Spring Mill Inn and watch the birds feed as you enjoy lunch or dinner buffet featuring a big salad bar, colorful vegetables, great tasting chicken, fish, and meats, and delicious desserts, including granny cake. And stop by the gift shop after a great meal at the Spring Mill Inn. 
You've worked hard to build and protect your estate throughout your lifetime. Enjoy the confidence that comes from knowing all you've worked for may be preserved for your heirs. Please call Jamie Sullivan, Senior Vice President of Investments of Sullivan Financial Consulting of Raymond James, located in Mitchell at 849-2670. Jamie can help design a comprehensive plan suited for your family's future financial needs. Call Jamie Sullivan today at 849-2670. Raymond James and Associates Incorporated, member New York Stock Exchange, SIPC. Your car is not just a mode of transportation. It is an investment. To protect that investment, take it to the guys at Wollstone Automotive in Mitchell to keep it in tip-top condition. David Wollstone, Dickie Gaines, and the crew have a combined half-century of experience so you know your vehicle is in good hands. From the simplest of tune-ups to major overhauls, you can count on Wollstone Automotive to do the job right. Trust your car's maintenance to the pros at Wollstone Automotive on Main Street in downtown Mitchell. Call 849-4012. Hi, this is Lynn at Reeser Chiropractic Center. When was the last time you saw your chiropractor? Been a while? It's time to make another appointment. Good health is an everyday concern. It's something that should be worked at. Dr. Lolita is just the person to advise and help you with your own personal health care plan. She's an expert on prevention and good health. Make an appointment today. Call Reeser Chiropractic Center at 812-723-2277. Hello to all you drivers from your friends at Valley Marathon, where 32-ounce fountain drinks are just 79 cents every day. Check out the daily special and our six different flavors of cappuccino and pick up a Marathon credit card application. Save money at the pump with the Jones Reward Card at Valley Marathon. Bust it. Back once again at the Hive in Mitchell, where... Maybe best can be summed up by my former good friend, the late, great Chuck Akers, who would say after two exciting games, the real winners tonight were the fans. They were indeed treated to a couple of dandies. Mitchell able to prevail in overtime in the girls' game over Valley, 56-53. to And it took until the fourth quarter, but the uh, Spring Valley Blackhawk boys able to ramp it up into a little higher gear, and they're able to pull away and defeat the Mitchell Blue Jackets tonight in the guys' game by a final count of 42-35. to 35. So we're off and running with the uh, boys here, Paul, and as uh, Kevin Terrell always says, you don't always have to paint a Picasso to be able to oh. hang that uh, painting on the uh, in the living room uh, wall, I guess. So it wasn't pretty, but I'm sure Michael Leachman will... We'll take the results, sir. Well, uh, again, I, I think it was just a typical first game, Mike, for uh, both teams. You're trying to feel things out, see who's going to be able to do certain things for you, how you're going to play uh, defensively, who's going to step up on the offensive end. So uh, I'm sure coach, uh, both coaches came away with some uh, pretty good points tonight. Well, let's take a look at the scoring in the contest for Mitchell. They go to 0-1 on the year. So this was both teams season opener, the home opener for the Jackets, so they're 0-1 on the road and 0-1 in conference play. They had one player in double figures tonight as Doug Thomas used 10 players with six of them scoring. Braxton Barrett, he was a force inside, 6'3", and they don't list his weight, but I'd say a good 220 pounds, and he had a big first half, 11 of his 15. The Hawks did a little better in checking him in the uh, second half, but he still ends up going for a game-high 15. Jarrett Phillips scored all seven of his points in the uh, third quarter. He was saddled with foul trouble in the first half, came alive there in the third quarter, but again, the Hawks uh, held him in check there in that uh, fourth quarter of play when the game was on the line. Cade uh, Phillips playing his uh, former school for the very last time ends up with five points. One of his two baskets was a three-pointer, and uh, Peyton Moore, foul, uh, in foul trouble much of the night as well, ended up with four. Two off the bench, each from Michael Bell and Luke Lefevre. Lefevre getting his on a pair of free throws. Cam Blackwell averaged six points, one of the uh, two starters, Paul, that uh, was back for Coach uh, Doug Thomas held scoreless tonight, and in fact, if I can find his uh, sheet, he only put up four shots 
right. all night long. And I, so, only, uh, I just had him down for one defensive rebound, so right. I had him for So uh, talk about Valley doing an outstanding job defensively on, uh, I think, a guy that uh, Doug Thomas is going to come to rely on as the uh, season goes along. Drew Simpson, Leighton Allen, and Edric Cash all played for the Jackets, but did not score. For Spring Valley, as they pick up their first road win of the year, 1-0 on the year, and more importantly, 1-0 in league play, as they'll have their showdown 10 days from now when they travel to the doghouse to take on Orleans. A lot of balance. Christian Tucker leading the way. He finishes with 10 points tonight, four baskets, two out of four at the free throw line. Ryan Tao, boy, did he come up uh, big tonight, uh, Paul. I thought he had a really good game, yeah. Mike. Seven of his nine points right. there in the fourth quarter, including that huge three that really uh, gave Valley a little bit of separation. Well, when Valley was running their offense a lot of time, he was like their third or fourth option, and he really took advantage of it. So ten from Christian Tucker, nine from Ryan Tao. Zach Carnes with eight. He had two three-pointers and uh, hit a couple of free throws as well. Six more from Braden Whitaker. So you have four guys all between six and ten points. Off the bench, Cole Cooper had a couple of baskets for four. Trenton McElfresh, a first quarter traditional three-point play, bucket and a foul shot. Jackson Land, a fourth quarter field goal to round out the scoring. Isaac Carnes was the eighth player to play for Valley in the game tonight, but did not score. So ten out of Christian Tucker, nine out of Ryan Powell. Eight from Zach Carnes and six more from Braden Whitaker. Badly led eight to five at the end of the first quarter, twenty to eighteen at halftime. They got outscored eleven to eight in the third quarter to trail by one, twenty nine twenty eight. But a fourteen to six run of the fourth quarter, proving to be the difference here as Valley goes on to the win, forty two to thirty five on the fast Eddie scoreboard. We'll take a quick break and continue with more, including a chat. We have head coach Michael Leachman. He'll be along with us in a moment. This is Spring Valley High School Basketball. In today's fast-paced society, we depend on our cars to get us where we need to go with work, kids, and a busy lifestyle. We don't have time for breakdowns. That's why so many people take their vehicles to B&L Auto Repair in Mitchell to get back on the road as soon as possible. With three full-time mechanics on duty, including owner Clifton Odell, B&L will use computer diagnostics to determine your problem so they can get it repaired and have you on your way in no time. Trust the team with a decade of complete automotive computer diagnostic service to the area. B&L Auto Repair at the corner of 8th and Grissom in Mitchell. 849-4684. Hello, my name is Ross Key. I speak farming and represent Springs Valley Bank and Trust, a true community bank committed to agriculture. As an ag specialist, I am committed to working with our customers and supporting the economic strength of our agricultural community. I look forward to building new and lasting relationships with farmers, businesses, and the people in the communities in which we live and work. Loyal to you, your family, and your future. Springs Valley Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Focused on you. Springs Valley Bank and Trust. You need gadgets. For that one-stop shopping destination for routers, flash drives, cables, smartphones, TVs, and more, search no longer. Our technology powered by Smithville store is conveniently located in downtown French Lake at 505 South Maple Street. If you prefer to shop online, browse our online store at smithville.tech. That's smithville.tech. Getting what you need is just a click away. That's smithville.tech. This is Springs Valley Junior Guard Cole Cooper and you're listening to Blackhawk Basketball on Q100. We come to Mitchell High School where the Springs Valley boys open the season on a winning note as they knock off the Mitchell Blue Jackets by a final count of 42 to 35. Joining us now, head coach Michael Leachman. And, uh, coach, uh, why not? Just wait till the fourth quarter and then, then turn things on. I know that's not the way you wanted it, but uh, Mitchell did a nice job of hanging with you. But uh, I can't help but think about a comment that you made to me uh, earlier this week going into the ball game for being a first game to try to keep the kids fresh down the stretch and that's what you did using uh, eight guys on your bench in fact I think you started the fourth quarter with almost all your bench players maybe one or two starters but then when you finally did bring those uh, guys back in I thought they were energized they were fresh and I think that's what helped you to the win tonight yeah I'll tell you what our, our bench 
I mean, I don't know how many minutes they played. It wasn't a whole lot, you know, at times, but they came in and did a really nice job for us. They made a lot of good plays for us and game-changing plays. And, you know, it, it was tough there to uh, keep those three stars on the bench in that fourth quarter. It was such a close game, but, you know, that's, our coaching staff trusts everybody. You know, we trust all those guys, and, you know, that says a lot about how much we trust those, those three bench guys that we had them in the game in the fourth quarter. And it was a tie game, you know, one-point game, one-possession game. So we trust all eight of our guys, and we really trust nine. You know, Drake Terry, he's going to help us by the end of the year. He's a hard worker, good kid. He's going he's gonna to contribute for us, too. I know he he, uh, he had a – didn't get the bench tonight, but he'll help us down the road. I'll tell you what, Coach, I thought for the first game you really ran your offense very well. Uh, you got some nice, uh, good-looking shots, open shots, but you, they just wouldn't fall for it in the first three quarters. Not so much the third quarter, but the first half, so – it was nice to see you pick up that intensity in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we got we got a, got a lot of good looks tonight. Um, those are shots we're going to make down the road. It'd been nice to make them tonight, but you know that's that's how it goes sometimes. Um, we weren't we weren't real crisp at sometimes in our offense, but the good thing we were doing we were still moving the ball. We were still attacking right, downfield. Yeah. For you know, the first game, right. yeah. we did some good yeah. things there. So you know I was happy in that aspect, but we'll keep we'll keep cleaning that up, and I think it will look better as the season goes on. We also saw a lot of zone tonight. You know we kind of anticipated right. that, especially after the JV game. But uh, I think we got the shooters to not knock, knock teams out of the zone. We just gotta we just gotta do it. Oh, I think you'll do that as the season goes on, no doubt about it. Coach, uh, I thought Ryan Tao stepped up big for you. Seven of his nine points there in the fourth quarter, and boy, how big was that uh, three that he stepped out and, and hit there from the left wing? Yeah, it was awesome. He made that. I got uh, got real excited there. We had a conversation a couple weeks ago, and uh, I asked him how much more confident he was this year than he was last year at this time and he said he was a lot more confident and mainly because of his three-point shot he, he put a lot of time in this this uh, off season and working that three-point shot and last year i wouldn't let him shoot him he told me he could shoot him but i'd never seen it so i told him no no threes you know and this year he told me he promised me he worked at it and i, I gave him the green light and he's a smart kid he's gonna pick good shots but he, he came in and hit the biggest shot of the game for us and i was proud of him you know i thought too we talked about again having to replace, you know, the Josh Weddles, the Chase Cresselius, Logan Russell, Brian Selby. So, uh, obviously, these guys that, that split time and had limited uh, playing time on the varsity last year, not only getting more minutes, but probably in a lot of different roles. And I'm sure you're also asking them to do a lot of things. And, and I cite as an example, uh, Zach Carnes, just playing mostly around the uh, perimeter, didn't look for a shot a lot last year, but, boy, he stepped up and hit a couple big threes for you. I thought uh, he had a couple of nice drives as well, always playing with his head up. So he's certainly going to be one of the keys. And you could probably go down the list. Uh, Christian Tucker stepping up as well. And, and uh, Jackson Land certainly anchoring that uh, front line for you as well. So uh, a lot of guys really seeing their responsibilities uh, enhanced here this year. Yeah, you know, uh, and the thing I love about our team, you know, everybody thinks Christian's just a shooter. And that's something I talked to him about this year. You know, you're not just a shooter. You're, you're a scorer. And uh, I think the night he was probably 0 for 7, 0 for 8 from 3, but he still scored 10 points for us because he's putting the ball on the floor, going hard to the basket. So he made some good plays for us late in that game. Zach Carnes, I told you this the other day, too. I told him that he's been looking a lot better in practice and uh, getting after it and looking to score and attack, and I thought he did that tonight. Um, and really, I mean, Jackson Land, you know, he, he didn't fill up the stat line. You know, he didn't score any points for us. But if you watch that game, he made a lot of big plays that third quarter, getting deflections. Um, really, I mean, I could sit here and talk about each player and how much they done for us. But sure. it, it was it was a good night for us. Braxton Barrett, their big man, really kind of had his way with you there in the uh, in the first half. What did you do? He only scored four after halftime. Did you guys make uh, a lot of changes? We, we made some team changes, but individually, all, we, all I told you know is 55 kicked our butt. I mean, he, he put it to us that whole half. Uh, the second half, we went to a lot more zone, tried to pack it in, keep him from getting touches. They only hit one three-pointer all night that I can remember, and that was Kate Pritchett's bank right here on the wing. So uh, we made an emphasis to pack it in and uh, try to keep 55 from dominating it like he did that first half. I thought there in the uh, third quarter, you guys did a nice job of just hanging tough with Mitchell, kind of under adversity, didn't get a lot of breaks to go your way, and uh, the kids could have lost it, but I, I thought they did a great job of keeping their composure after it. Yeah, I went in the locker room after the game. I asked them, you know, who, who, played their, who in here played their best game? And Trenton raised his hand, and I said, put your hand down. I said, you know, nobody, nobody played good for us. I said, we all suck. 
I suck. We all suck. And I said, you know, but the great thing is we still won. You know, that says a lot about our toughness, a lot about our team, that we can all suck. And as long as we stick with it, keep our composure, keep our head high, we can still win basketball games. And I, so I said, if we take anything from this game, take away that, that we, we are a tough enough team, even when we're at our worst, we can still win games, you know. And we won games like this last year where it was ugly and we had to get baskets and stops at the end of the game and win close games. But we never did this last year where we, where we won on the road, where we won a close game on the road. So that was a huge step in the right direction right off the bat. So, you know, I'm a little disappointed in how we play, but at the same time I'm really encouraged that we can play like that and win a road game against a good conference team. So does that mean that uh, the kids didn't play quite well enough that on uh, Thursday they get the invitation to the Leachman household and for uh, turkey and all the uh, fixings and stuff? <laughs> They're more than welcome to come over. They're more than welcome to eat with us. The more they eat, the less I'll eat, which I, which I need. All right. Coach, 10-day layoff, but uh, I guess maybe that's some of the good news. You'll get more practice time, but uh, another tough one back on the road again to a place where uh, that has not been uh, kind to Springs Valley for a number of years, and that, of course, is Orleans. Yeah, it's going to be a real tough game. Brad, Coach Bradley does an amazing job with that group. Um, he's got a lot of them back. they got good guard play. You know, they're always tough to be at Orleans. we got our hands, uh, you know, we got our, you know, we're going to be in a tough situation. We're going to have our hands tied a little bit because they're such a good team, but we'll be all right. We just play our game, keep our composure. We'll be right there, and they'll be right there. It should be a really good, fun, really good, fun game. All right. Coach, thanks for stopping by. Congratulations on getting this first one under the belt, and we'll see you again a uh, week from Friday against uh, Orleans. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Good luck this season. Thank that you. is Michael Leachman, the head coach of the Springs Valley Blackhawks, joining us after the contest. Valley winner tonight on the Fast Eddie scoreboard, 42-35. to We'll take a quick break and continue with more of our post-game activities from the Hive and Mitchell. You're listening to Spring Valley High School Basketball. A message from Spring Valley Meadows and Prince Lake. As we age, recuperating from an illness or surgery may take more time than it used to. It's important for you to follow your doctor's discharge orders and include physical, occupational, and speech therapies when needed. Gimping on post-hospitalization therapy can cause potential falls and infections. So do it for yourself and do it for the ones you love. The road to recovery begins at Springs Valley Battles in Prince Lick, where caring people make the difference. Call us at 936-9991. Your car is not just a mode of transportation. It is an investment. To protect that investment, take it to the guys at Wolston Automotive in Mitchell to keep it in tip-top condition. David Wolston, Dickie Gaines, and the crew have a combined half-century of experience so you know your vehicle is in good hands. From the simplest of tune-ups to major overhauls, you can count on Wolston Automotive to do the job right. Trust your car's maintenance to the pros at Wolston Automotive on Main Street in downtown Mitchell. Call 849-4012. You've worked hard to build and protect your estate throughout your lifetime. Enjoy the confidence that comes from knowing all you've worked for may be preserved for your heirs. Please call Jamie Sullivan, Senior Vice President of Investments of Sullivan Financial Consulting of Raymond James, located in Mitchell at 849-2670. Jamie can help design a comprehensive plan suited for your family's future financial needs. Call Jamie Sullivan today at 849-2670. Raymond James and Associates Incorporated, member New York Stock Exchange, SIPC. Delicious granny cake with pecan sauce, a specialty worth the trip to Spring Mill Inn. This is Taylor Fleetwood, sales manager, asking you to bring the family for our bounteous buffet and big selection of desserts to satisfy any palate. Come to the Spring Mill Inn and watch the birds feed as you enjoy lunch or dinner buffet featuring a big salad bar, colorful vegetables, great tasting chicken, fish, and meats, and delicious desserts, including granny cake. And stop by the gift shop after a great meal at the Spring Mill Inn. This is Springs Valley's senior guard, Zach Karn. Your power station for Blackhawk Sports is Q100 WFLQ. Back again at the Hive here in Mitchell as Valley starts off the season. On a positive note, they knock off Mitchell tonight, 42-35. to One of the guys that had a hand in that, senior point guard, Zach Carnes. Eight points here tonight, probably a number of assists as well, and... Uh, Zach, first of all, congratulations. And anytime you can get that first win under oh, your yeah. belt, it, it's always a good one. Feels good, feels good. Especially on the road, right, Zach? Oh, yeah. Especially <laughs> on the road. This Mitchell team stayed with you guys for the better part of uh, three quarters. Talk about what they were doing to, to kind of keep you guys in check a little bit. 
Uh, they were doing a pretty good job defensively. I mean, our shots just weren't falling. We were taking good shots all around. I mean, we had good shots all around and just weren't falling. Now, your role has changed even though you've played, you know, a couple, three years on the uh, varsity here in your senior year. Talk a little bit about what uh, Coach is looking for you to do. Uh, this year, Coach, usually I'm pass first point guard. I still am. But this year, Coach doesn't want me to get my shot. He doesn't want me to look for my shot. In practice, I've been looking for my shot, and tonight I've been looking for it. Well, you had those big three-pointer, two three-pointers yep. there in that uh, second quarter. Talk about, did those come within the context of the offense? They did. I think so. I mean, he drove, kick, and I was I was calling for it. I said, give me the ball. Coach uh, took you guys out and gave you a little bit of rest there to, to begin the uh, fourth quarter. Did you think that, that helped you down the stretch? I think it did. I mean, we were all anxious to get in there. We were ready. We were one in there as soon as it started. But he did the right thing, and I, I agree with him. I know you guys scrimmage Saturday against Lanesville, but it's still not quite the same yes, we're not settled in to yet. simulate. So how did everybody, do you think, hold up from a stamina standpoint tonight? I think we held up really well. I was, I was very impressed the way we held up. It's just good on the schedule now. You have 10 days before you get ready for Orleans. So uh, oh, yeah. other than maybe uh, taking Turkey Day off, I guess, uh, surely. Uh, we're going to be a little stuck. <laughs> we're going to be running extra, but, yeah. yeah, we'll be ready for Orleans. Fr- Friday might be a little rough on the uh, Friday's going to be very start. rough. Yeah. We'll, we'll see how that goes, but at least uh, it'll make the turkey taste a little bit, a uh, little bit sweeter. Just a little bit. Yeah, one, la- a couple more things here, Zach. Just a lot of not new guys. I mean, they're, they've been in the system, but uh, as we were talking with uh, with Paul here, guys like Jackson and uh, Christian, they didn't see a lot of time last year. And now they're stepping up into big time roles. Do you think they'll relish that opportunity? Oh, I think so. They will. Jackson, Tucker, and Cole, they, were all, they played an amazing night. I'm very proud of them. The way they rebounded, it might be little, but we get in there and battle. And with you being one of the five seniors on this team as you go through your final year, kind of, especially for these guys, uh, a little bit of a sense of urgency, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, most definitely. they they got a big role to fill in next year. Well, Zach, all I can say is keep running the offense like you're doing. You're a good point guard. You have a very good uh, basketball IQ. How would you like to come down and play in Florida the rest of the year? <laughs> Thank you. I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you. He coaches at a big school. So, uh, yeah, 3,200 kids at the school down there at Bureau Beach High School. So, really? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think too many Valley fans will let you go here. They, they need you out there on the court. Congratulations. Yeah. Great win tonight. Thank and you so much. We'll see you guys uh, okay. you, 10 days against Orleans. Oh, yeah. We'll be ready. Okay. That is senior Zach Carnes, eight points uh, tonight. Had two big free throws down the stretch as well as the Hawks win it. 42-35 of the Mitchell Blue Jackets. So the two teams came a split with the Mitchell girls edging out Valley 56-53 to in overtime in our opener here this evening. Paul, you want to take a look at the uh, final stats? Sure. First of all, for the victorious Springs Valley Blackhawks, 42-35 this evening over the Mitchell Blue Jackets. They were 13 of 31 from two-point field goal range for 42%. They attempted 15 three-pointers, connected on three for 20%. 16 of 46 from the floor overall for 35%. They were 7 of 13 from the charity stripe for 53%. They did pull down 24 rebounds, 8 offensive rebounds, and 16 defensive rebounds. They only committed... Nine turnovers, and Mike, you know, in the fourth quarter, they didn't have any turnovers. Wow. That, that's pretty good for the first that game. That is real good, yes, absolutely. And uh, they also, uh, well, nine turnovers. And for the Mitchell Blue Jackets, they were 13 of 28 from two-point range, 46%. Only one of 12 from three-point range, 8%. 14 of 40 overall, 35%. They were perfect at the free throw line, 6 of 6. And they pulled down 21 rebounds, only four offensive rebounds and 17 defensive rebounds. And they had 16 turnovers and uh, nine of those coming in that second half of play. In the big quarter, they had seven turnovers in that third quarter. It really hurt the Jack. How about big keys, uh, Paul? Mitchell shot just one free throw in the entire second half of play. Only right. six for the game, and I thought that was uh, key, even though there was a stretch in there where it seemed like there were some questionable foul calls. Valley wasn't, or Mitchell was not in the bonus at the time, so they didn't shoot free throws, and 
Actually, uh, Valley never did. They committed 16 fouls in that second half, so Mitchell never did get to the uh, to the one and one, and I thought that was key. Well, well. Mitchell was uh, they, they were driving the ball to the basket a lot, Mike, but they would kick it back out. Right. So there wasn't really a lot of fouls there to be called. All right, final again in the boys' game, 42-35 on the Fast Teddy's board. Spring Valley defeats Mitchell. We'll take another break and continue with more from the Hive in Mitchell. This is Spring Valley High School Basketball. In today's fast-paced society, we depend on our cars to get us where we need to go with work, kids, and a busy lifestyle. We don't have time for breakdowns. That's why so many people take their vehicles to B&L Auto Repair in Mitchell to get back on the road as soon as possible. With three full-time mechanics on duty, including owner Clifton Odell, B&L will use computer diagnostics to determine your problem so they can get it repaired and have you on your way in no time. Trust the team with a decade of complete automotive computer diagnostic service to the area. B&L Auto Repair at the corner of 8th and Grissom in Mitchell. 849-4684. Holy cow! It's the Black Friday sales event, and it's in full swing right now! And no, it's not Harry Carey, it's John Storm for Bedford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram! And that's right, the Black Friday sales event is in full swing with new 2017 Chrysler Pacificas with 0% interest, up to 72 months, and a $1,000 cash back. So hurry into Bedford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for their greatest deal of the year. Train engineers put our heating and cooling products through almost every test imaginable. So while you're firing up a pot of coffee, they're firing golf balls into a compressor. Testing like this is the reason train is so reliable. And why our engineers tend to have a wicked slice. For year-round comfort and savings in your home, count on Edwards Heating and Cooling, your train dealer in Mitchell. For a free estimate, call 849-5489. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. So the flu is going around again, but it doesn't have to keep going around. Lessen your chances of getting the dreadful flu this season with a flu shot at Ingle King RX. During flu season, Ingle King RX provides flu vaccines in store with no appointment needed. Their immunization certified pharmacists can answer any questions you have about the flu shot, pneumonia, or other vaccinations. Stop by Ingle King RX to learn more. Located on Main Street in Mitchell. Hello to all you drivers from your friends at Valley Marathon, where 32-ounce fountain drinks are just 79 cents every day. Check out the daily special and our six different flavors of cappuccino and pick up a Marathon credit card application. Save money at the pump with the Jones Reward Card at Valley Marathon. For certified Angus beef steak served up the way you want, a great atmosphere, come to 33 Brick Street in French Lake. With a heated, screened-in patio to make you feel like you're outside, come to 33 Brick Street in French Lake. You get the idea for good food all in a legendary atmosphere. It's 33 Brick Street in downtown French Lake. For Springs Valley tonight, they win the boys' game 42-35. They fall in the girls' game 56-53 in overtime. We didn't get a chance to run through uh, some of the numbers from the ladies' game, so uh, let's do that very briefly. Both teams uh, are probably pretty glad this is not their home gym because uh, they left a lot to be desired, a lot of the probably more clanging than just here at the what, fire Mike, station. You know, I coached here for several years, and I don't recall ever having those rims that tight. But yeah, you know, every coach uh, you know wants to have his own thing. So. Right. Valley in the girls' game, 20 of 55 for 36 percent, only one of 11 from three-point range, uh, and they were 12 of 22, 55 percent at the uh, foul line. Mitchell didn't uh, actually shot worse; they were 20 of 60 for 33 percent, two of five from three-point range. They were 14 out of 24, 58 percent at the free throw line. Uh, rebounds. We're dead even at 30 apiece, and Valley had two more turnovers, 16 to 14, over the uh, Lady Blue Jackets. And that was a game that saw 10 ties and one lead change. So if you factor in the three ties and eight lead changes in our game uh, here tonight, the boys, that uh, means both games were tight much of the way. So Mitchell, a winner in the girls' game, and the Valley boys come back and win against the Jackets in the nightcap. We'll take our final break and wrap things up when we come back to the Hive in a moment. This is Springs Valley High School Basketball.
colon cancer. It's called the silent killer because it usually has no outward symptoms until it's too late. A colonoscopy is the best way to detect and remove precancerous polyps. Screening helps save lives. If you are age 50 or older, talk to your doctor and get your colonoscopy scheduled at IU Health Paley Hospital. Colon cancer can be prevented. Commit to health and get checked. Hi, this is Lynn at Research Chiropractic Center. When was the last time you saw your chiropractor? Been a while? It's time to make another appointment. Good health is an everyday concern. It's something that should be worked at. Dr. Lolita is just the person to advise and help you with your own personal health care plan. She's an expert on prevention and good health. Make an appointment today. Call Reeser Chiropractic Center at 812-723-2277. Hand bread efficient hip tenderloins that are second to none, homemade soups, and a large selection of craft beverages all served up in a great atmosphere. Come to 33 Brick Street in French Lick for a variety of other menu items, even for the most discriminating appetites. And a tantalizing kids menu, come to 33 Brick Street in French Lick. You get the idea for good food all in a legendary atmosphere, and not to mention all the authentic Larry Bird memorabilia, 33 Brick Street in downtown French Lick. Back for the final time at the Hive in Mitchell, where Springs Valley splits tonight. The girls fall in overtime to Mitchell, 56-53, to but the boys bounce back with a solid fourth quarter and defeat the Jackets in both teams' season opener, 42-35. to So two outstanding ball games, uh, Paul, here uh, tonight. And uh, for the girls, I mean, so close. Fought a war of attrition with two girls uh, fouling out. In the boys, uh, Mitchell able to stay close. They actually led Valley going into the fourth quarter, but the Hawks, first aid of the fourth quarter, able to establish a little bit of distance and with some uh, solid play, no turnovers in the fourth quarter, and they were five out of six at the free throw line down the stretch to uh, hold off. How many exactly. games have the girls played? So uh, they are now three and two. Three and two, okay. So five oh. games. This was Mitchell's eighth game. They're six and two now. Okay. All right. Uh, their yeah. only losses have been to B&L and Brownstown. So good. you can see that uh, yeah. Mitchell, a good team. Well, so. I caught the fourth quarter in the overtime of that girls' game. You're right. It was a good game. Yeah. All the way down. And you throw in Valley's. They only lost by three to Forest Park, their other loss. So uh, Marty Niehaus has this team playing pretty well, despite the fact that Ellison Burton blew out her ACL in the final game of the volleyball regional back in October. Well, I'm glad to also see Kelly helping you some of the girls' games. I'm sure she misses it. <laughs> I'm sure she but does. She's too. got a little one now, right? She's yes. Got, yeah, well, that's great. Friendly, and she's adorable. Yeah. No question about that. So, uh, well, we appreciate you, uh, you got to sneak up here. Oh, yeah, and, Mike. Uh, uh, well, I appreciate uh, uh, Shane Whitsett as the head coach of Vero Beach. And uh, uh, since we're going to be down there Christmas, uh, and we don't really have anything this weekend. Uh, he said, I'll go ahead and get up there for two or three days, you know, with your family for Thanksgiving. I appreciate that. Okay. But uh, when I get back, in fact, I've got to go back Friday. Uh, we do have a preseason, a varsity-only game, Saturday at St. Cloud, Florida. And then we don't uh, open up until December 7th okay. uh, at uh, Melbourne Central Catholic, who's a very good school. They're pretty okay. good. All right. Well, good luck with all your coaching, and uh, don't be a stranger back up here. Oh no, no. Uh, you know, the thing about the basketball season in Florida, it, it ends a lot quicker. Uh, usually, uh, about mid February. Okay. It just depends on how far you go in the tournament, right. obviously. Right. But uh, it's so it, uh, the season is over with a little bit earlier down there. All right. All right. To recap, here in the girls' game, Valley forces overtime, but the Jackets able to prevail 56-53 in overtime. Stevie McNew had 17 in the loss for the uh, Lady Hawks. Jewel McCormick, despite fouling out, ended up with 12. Mitchell improves to 6-2 and on the year. The Lady Hawks fall to 3-2. and Mitchell now 2-0 and in conference play in the girls, while Valley, that was their initial league. Uh, contest And then in the boys' game, with Mitchell leading 29-28 going into the fourth quarter, Valley scores the first eight points of the fourth quarter to establish a seven-point lead, and Mitchell could not recover as Valley pulls out the 42-35 victory. Leading the way for the uh, Hawks tonight was 
Kristen Tucker leading a balanced attack with 10, Ryan Tao 9, Zach Carnes with 8, and Braden Whitaker with 6. Hawks now 1-0 and on the year. Same record away from home and in late play. For the Jackets, Braxton Barrett pacing the way with 15, but they go to 0-1 on the year at home and in league action. Next up for Mitchell, they'll have a 10-day layoff for the boys. They'll be at Crawford County on December the 1st. The girls are back in action a week from tonight there at Brown County. Meanwhile, the Valley girls take on Bar Reeve in Montgomery next Tuesday night. And ditto for the boys there off until a week from Friday when they travel to the doghouse to take on the Orleans Bulldogs. Long night, but a fun one as well as the two teams split here tonight. As always, we're grateful to our many advertisers who have allowed us to bring this game into your home, car, business, wherever you might be tuning in. And we're especially appreciative of the cooperation we received from our participating schools, so we send a thank you to the administration and coaches for both Spring Valley and Mitchell High Schools. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's broadcast as much as it has been our pleasure and privilege to bring it to you. Don't forget, we'll have IU basketball coming your way on both Wednesday and Friday night this week. The old open bucket game at noon on Saturday as the Hoosiers try to make it five straight over the Boilermakers in the bucket and also become bowl eligible. And then make sure you're back with us again as the Orleans boys debut at home against Crothersville on Saturday night, 7.30, the scheduled tip. Our broadcast covers to begin at 7.15. Our next broadcast of the Valley Girls a week from Thursday when they will entertain Northeast Dubois. Again, a 7.30 start there. And then the boys in action a week from Friday when they travel to Orleans. Again, 7.50, our start time with 7.30, the schedule tip-off. For our studio engineer this evening, Adam Hole, our statistician for tonight's contest, McKenna Perley, and for my outstanding analysts, Kelly Schmidt and Paul Stroud, this is Mike Hamilton bidding you a fond and pleasant farewell from the Hive and Mitchell for tonight's final scores in the girls' game in overtime, Mitchell 56 Springs Valley 53, and in the boys' game, Springs Valley 42, Mitchell 35. This is Springs Valley Boys and Girls Basketball. WFLQ, the sports voice of the Valley, thanks you for listening to tonight's presentation of Springs Valley High School Basketball. Brought to you by Reeser Chiropractic in Paoli, the natural way to good health. Edwards Heating and Cooling, your train dealer in Mitchell. For a free estimate, call 849-5489. B&L Auto Repair at the corner of 8th and Grissom in Mitchell. Bedford Ford Lincoln Roush at the River in Bedford. IU Health Paoli Hospital, the only nationally ranked health care system in the state of Indiana. Spring Mill Inn in Mitchell. Sullivan Financial at Raymond James and Associates Investments. Highway 60 and 9th Street in Mitchell. Wollston Automotive, Main Street in downtown Mitchell, 849-4012. Ingle King RX on Main Street in Mitchell. Spring Valley Bank and Trust with offices in French Lake, Paoli, and Jasper. Springs Valley Meadows Highway 145 in French Lake. And by Smithville Fiber, now offering DSL and fast internet service to customers. Another way to serve you better. High School Basketball is a presentation of Q100 Sports. You can best show your appreciation for this broadcast by telling and patronizing our sponsors. You are listening to your power station for sports. Q100, WFLQ, French Lick.